Right, we are live. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Kiwi Lads channel. We are back for another match of International Rugby, a Summer Nations Series fixture between Ireland and Samoa. Now, we have already seen a massive upset tonight or this morning, depending on whereabouts you are in the world. But this is going to be a very exciting one between Ireland and the Samoans because Ireland, they are looking to build some massive form heading into Group B of the Rugby World Cup. Pool D has been opened well and truly wide open by what we've just seen between England and Fiji. But I hope you guys are all doing well. I'm very excited for this game, as you can probably tell, because I am struggling to put sentences together. But looking through at this Irish side, they are the home team for this match. Kian Healy in the front row alongside Tom Stewart, as well as Finlay Bellham. Now, unfortunately, the injury of Dan Sheehan does now mean that there may be a little bit of a change by the time that Ireland get to the Rugby World Cup. And that would be a massive hit, seeing as the impact he's been able to have as of late. Ian Henderson and Ty Byrne going to be the locking duo for this match. So a little bit of a change from what we did see in England's, or sorry, Ireland's last match up against England. Ryan Beard at number six, Josh Van Den Flaer at number seven. He will definitely look to put that pressure on in the breakdowns alongside this man at number eight. Kaelin Doris, Connor Murray and Jack Crowley will be the 19 combo. Stuart McClowski alongside Robbie Henshaw. So a change from Bundy Aki and Ringrose who did play there for last week's game. Keith Earls in his 101st test match. Matt Hansen out on the right wing and Jimmy O'Brien at number 15. So quite a few changes for Ireland compared to what they did have in their matchup against the English. But they will still not be underestimating what Samoa can do seeing as they're in some pretty decent form from the Pacific Nations Cup. But looking through at their side, will be James Lay, Say Lala Lamb, and also Paul Alo Amili, the man who did captain the Samoans in the first match of the Pacific Nations Cup, in which they were able to get themselves the victory over Japan. Chris Vui as one of the co-captains in this game, alongside Theo McFarland. At number five, Talini Su at six, Fritz Lee seven, and Stephen Luatua, the big man at number eight. He is dangerous whether he's playing blindside, open side, or number eight. For this game, gets eight. On his back, Jonathan Tamatene as the number nine with Lima Sapawanga. It is his official international debut. He did get a chance for the Samoans last week in the game up against the Barbarians in which they were victorious, although that did not count towards his international caps. This is his official debut. Tamua Manu and also Ulipano Junior Sultini in the midfield. Nigel Wong out on the left. Ed Fidel out on the right. Is Sai Manawatu recently getting themselves a big win in the Bunnings EBC for the first time this year in their game up against Northland and Duncan Paiaua, a man who we've seen actually playing a little bit of 12 and 13 throughout the Pacific Nations Cup, now transitions to 15 and unfortunately with that recent injury of Tim Nanai Williams, it may mean that he is the option that they have to go with alongside Danny Tawala in that number 15 jersey. But looking through at the chat, we have got there Go the Manu from it was Molali. And also we have got there the matches being played in France. Says Patrick Brady. And also in there goes Samoa. Says GT and go the Manu. Good luck boys was the other message there. I think Ireland have a great side. But they will underperform under the pressure of the quarters or the semi-final. Or oh, sorry, will they underperform? Pressure does strange uh, things to sides. It does. And I feel like at the moment for Ireland, to be honest, I know that this has been said at past World Cups before. But... This year, Ireland are looking better for a World Cup than I think they ever have. And I'm hoping that that momentum, they will be able to continue that towards the World Cup because at the end of the day, everyone wants to see a competitive Rugby World Cup amongst those top sides. Ireland, Scotland and South Africa all are part of the same group alongside Tonga and Romania. And I mean, we've just seen Scotland. They had a tough fought victory over Georgia. In the end, the scoreline says otherwise, but we've got to remember at halftime, it was a lot closer with Georgia having a nice early lead for a majority of that match. So I feel like there's still potential for all of the sides in that group to be able to improve slightly as we head towards their Rugby World Cup. Tonga, they haven't got themselves any more game time. They played uh, Canada in last week and the week before. Romania, they've finished their warm-up games. And I believe for that group, other than the Irish, everyone else has finished playing their games as well. But these are the matches that Ireland have got coming up in the near future. Their first game of the Rugby World Cup. They will be going head-to-head -head with the Romanians. That is at 1.30am New Zealand time. We will 
be covering that one on the Channel Island, then play Tonga the week after. That will be a 7 a.m. game, the big one up against the Springboks, and a Six Nations rematch to close out Pool B. It is going to be Ireland taking on Scotland, whereas for Samoa, they are a part of Pool D, and that is a group that is absolutely wide open now with some of the previous results that we have seen from the last few weeks of friendly Samoa versus Chile in their first game. So I feel like that's actually very beneficial for Samoa to have an opposition like Chile just to help them find their stride as the competition does get underway. Argentina taking on the Samoans in that game 27 days from now. And then also Japan versus Samoa and England versus Samoa there as well. Now I should mention, just quickly looking at that, Samoa with their first game 21 days away. They have got three weeks, whereas Ireland, they have only got the two. So Samoa actually having that bye for the first week. Some would consider that beneficial, and others would say maybe they want to get back out there, get rearing a go, and start really digging in their heels of this Rugby World Cup. And jitters, are, uh, jitters after the Fiji win. We should remember Ireland had 13 players who hadn't played competitive games since May against England. They should win this one, but respect for Samoa, great team, says Brian. Yeah, Samoa, they are heavy underdogs. In fact, even bigger underdogs than the Fijians were. I'm hoping to see a decent competitive fixture between these two teams. I know that Ireland definitely have the potential of being able to win this game, but I'd love to see Samoa show a little bit of fight, a little bit of grit, and just show that Paul D, maybe they could be in that top two. I'll be happy if Ireland make the first semi-final. Uh, we definitely won't win it says Stephen G. Although the big question is, if Ireland, let's say they make it to that semi-final, if that's their first time being there, is that going to drive them even more than maybe a side that's been there already? Because for Ireland, they might think of it as, this is our one chance. We've finally made it. Now we're going to make the most of it. And maybe the occasion could get to them. Maybe they are able to find that sixth gear and make their way through to the final. Looking through at their previous results, though, like we mentioned a bit earlier on, like someone said, they hadn't played a lot of rugby since around March and May, but it is going to be Ireland and Italy as the first warm-up game that we saw for the Irish. And then the second was last week, 29 points to 10 win over the English, who have been struggling big time as of late. And I believe after that loss to Fiji, England may drop the lowest that they've ever been in the world rugby rankings, if I'm not wrong. So that is something else that I'm sure... They won't be too happy about for Samoa. They were taking part in the Pacific Nations Cup, getting that massive first win over Japan, really setting the tone for their 2023. Had a close game with the Samoans, or sorry, had a close game with the Fijians. Did end up losing that 33 points to 19, and then a good win over the Tongans, 34 points to 9, keeping them trialless. And also, we should mention this Barbarians team. Yes, there were quite a few changes in there from what we would normally see for the Barbarians, but it was still the lowest score that a Barbarian side have been able to get since 2017. So for that reason, I believe Samoa, if they are able to defend relatively well, not concede as many tries as they did in that Fijian game, but more defending like they did up against Tonga, this could be maybe that little bit closer as well. But do let me know your score predictions in the chat as well, ladies and gentlemen, for who you think We'll be walking away with the victory in this game. See that Spain are playing Argentina at the same time as this game has taken place. So we will be keeping you informed all about when this game is happening. Although it's been a bit weird in terms of the time that kickoff is allocated to it. It says 6.45 here. I see that the coverage only starts at 6.50 here in New Zealand though. So I would assume it's actually maybe a little bit of a later kickoff than first anticipated. Samoan captain and Leinster player. Looks focused, says Mark. Yeah, that's the thing. He's playing, I guess, in two different minds at the moment. He's one side are his brothers. The other side, well, he probably consider them his brothers as well. The guys who he's worked with all throughout the URC for Leinster. And yeah, it's going to be a weird one for Michael Alatoa. He's going to be coming off the bench in this contest rather than starting. I don't know whether or not that is purely strategic. Maybe they want to have him fresh later on in the contest. Give Paul Aloamile. A little bit of a crack here as well. What we will quickly do is we will check the odds for this one because I can also watch the game through that same option. Yeah, it says it's five minutes away from kicking off, but I don't actually think that it is. In fact, no, it might be because I see that they've got the national anthem. So maybe the timing on Sky is actually wrong. But luckily, we have still got the coverage here 
and we will be able to cover it for throughout the match. We have got the Island will be too strong, but they will uh, be cagey about injuries, says yesterday. Yeah, that's the big thing for Ireland, trying to get out of this game without losing any of their key players. And when we think about key players, I'm looking through at some of those guys in the midfield, likes of a Robbie Henshaw. I'm looking at that four-pack, Josh Van and Flair, Kalen Doris. They would be the worst possible options to be losing here. Good winning run for Samoa. I'm not feeling that comfortable now, says Brian. And 30 points to the Samoa and 18, says Brian. And Ireland will win, says Aline. And also we have got their very true, Stephen G. And 745. So yeah, I thought it was only a few minutes away. But for some reason, Sky and New Zealand think that it's a bit later on. But I've got the coverage up on the betting site. $13 underdogs, the Samoans come in at. So that tells you people aren't expecting them to be able to win. Just to put that into perspective, I believe Georgia were more of a favourite than Samoa in that regard. Fiji definitely were. They were less than half of this number, or more than half of this number. And well, Coach Team says, Mark, we've got the Irish National Anthem, Finley Bellham. It's going to be excited to get that opportunity at number three in this match. And that's the thing, Ty Furlong rested, Andrew Porter rested. We'll show you guys the bench for this contest as well. Some great players for both sides. Gary Ringrose off the bench, Ross Byrne, Craig Casey, and Peter Omani, the Terminator. Just gets up from absolutely anything that is thrown in front of him. For the Samoans, Michael Alarato, we mentioned him a bit earlier on. I'm looking forward to the loose forward replacements in Miracle Fialangi, as well as Jordan Talfua, Iritari Iri, Christian Leliofano, and also Naria Fumai, the other man coming off the bench for the Samoans. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are just around the corner. I have uh, set feet, and they are playing, sorry, my bad, CCC, and also Ireland for a win, still smiling for the Fiji win. It was an absolutely awesome performance from the Fijians, and it just showed not just that they are in some great form, but maybe perhaps that unfortunately England are just struggling at the moment. It seems like maybe they chose the wrong time to get rid of that coach. Might end up hurting them in the long run, I do have to say. But yeah, they've got the highlights of Hawks Bay versus Auckland at the moment playing here in New Zealand. So as soon as the coverage picks up from that side of things, I will let you guys know. But for now, I've got the coverage on a different monitor. So we are all good. Michael Alala Toa firing up his team it is raining unfortunately at the ground which means maybe a little bit more slippery sorry england was simply bad says daryl and omani is a legend hope he gets on says yesterday and yeah he's just like the terminator almost doesn't do him justice with what peter omani is able to do like the amount of knocks that that man has taken and he just gets back up to his feet as if nothing's happened like you could throw a fridge at the man and he'd go oh i just felt a bit of a bump on my shoulder and he'd just keep playing I'd like to think that no one will be throwing a fridge at him in this game, although some would say that when a Samoan runs at you, it's the equivalent of getting bulldozed by a fridge. Uh, they are singing the anthem, says CC. Do let me know your score predictions as well, ladies and gentlemen. Also, first try scorer in this game, Island 40, Samoa 15 running game. Hope no suspect referee decisions, says Gordon. Now, I'm hoping the referee in this game will be relatively even and relatively consistent. It's the main thing. I think that's the thing that everyone's asking for in international rugby at the moment is just hoping that it's going to be consistent right across the board for this Rugby World Cup. A bot will be throwing fridges at them, says Daryl. And also, well, I thought Italy versus Japan and Scotland, Georgia was the last game today, says Mo. Not quite. So we've got this one. And also at the same time as this game has taken place, Argentina are taking on Spain. And then tomorrow night, we've got France versus Australia, which we are also covering on the channel, ladies and gentlemen. So if you are new, be sure to hit that subscribe button after yesterday's game and the earlier game, Fiji could well beat New Zealand if they played like last night, says Kutinda. I mean, Fiji have always been one of those sides that I believe one day will be able to take down the All Blacks. And I mean, if you're going to look at one of the All Blacks' worst performances with one of Fiji's, I would almost argue, one of their best, then of course there is going to be relatively even odds there. And Samoa players are built like 1950 refrigerators, says CC. They come with that extended warranty as well, don't they? They are built to last the Samoan side. Although they have lost three players due to injury already. So maybe not those guys. Tim Nenai Williams, sadly not there. He wasn't initially included in the Rugby World Cup squad, but it is mentioned that he is going to be, or was likely to be, 
the man added in is Lua Tua playing today. He is, but rather than playing at number six, he is actually at number eight for this game. It should be an easy win. Says sighted. I don't know, Samoa, one of those sides that maybe they've watched their Pacific Island brothers in that last game, Fiji, and they've gone, right, we, we need to fire up here. We need to show them what we can do also. And first try scorer, Matt Canson, though I loved it to be Keith Thiel, says Brian. And for Ireland, says sighted. And who's winning between Spain and Argentina? I say Argentina. 32, Spain, 12. Yeah, to put that into perspective for that game, Samoa in this game are $16 underdogs. You cannot bet on Argentina to win that game up against Spain. That is how secure they believe that game is. And I believe Argentina, or sorry, Spain were paying about $50 to win up against the Argentines, which is, I mean, very high, to be fair, but it is absolutely bucketing down for this contest. And we are just... About to get underway. Referee in charge, Wayne Barnes. So we know that he doesn't take any nonsense in the breakdowns. Hopefully, doesn't end up blowing the whistle every five seconds. And let's get ready, folks, for EG. Ain't been in the ABs. Give the box some credit for opening up a can of... Uh, uh, I, I censored the wrong word there. Whip. Mm. Yesterday afternoon, says Mo there. I mean, you never know. People were saying that Japan had no chance of being in the ABs, and they got extremely close Italy have come close up against the All Blacks recently. That's not to discount anything that South Africa were able to do out on this field, though. They were the much better side on the day. That ball has just stayed in the field of play until, I believe it was Tomua Manu just pushed into touch. That was a little bit scrappy early on. I think there was also a knock-on, so we are going to have the first scrum taking place in Samoa to play uh, super hard and fast in the first 20. Ireland to take over for the rest of the game. Says sighted and kickoff go, boys. I uh, wouldn't take too much for, or wouldn't take too much from ABs versus Box. Says yesterday. Yeah, it's one of those games that, I mean, it's certainly a confidence booster for the Spring Box, certainly a wake up call for the All Blacks. And that's what Ian Foster said in his post match interview. He pretty much said, it's what we needed. And it now is better to have it happen before the World Cup starts than to have it in an important fixture of that World Cup. England should. At this rate, call Jeff Bezos uh, to come coach them. Uh, as his lookalike isn't doing them any favours. Says good end of the ball now fed in for Ireland. With Connor Murray, more experienced halfback, getting to start this match rather than coming off the bench like last week up against England. Matt Hansen, nice attacking run, but good low tackle made on him by Olipano Junior Selteni. Ed Fidel wrestles down. I believe it was the Irish... Who was that? Was that Robbie Henshaw? No, it was Jimmy O'Brien actually joining the line early on and now going to the short side, trying to kick him behind. Not quite effective for Crowley, although it has found the touchline and now Samoa only about maybe 15 metres out from their line will have themselves the line out. I'm just going to quickly check to see whether or not Sky have realised that the game has taken place. Yes, they have, although they are quite delayed compared to the TAB. Interesting. So the TAB don't have a lot of delay, which is quite cool. Compared to Sky, which you would think it would be the other way around. A Lua Tua, big carry forward for him. Jonathan Tamatine putting up the box kick. Partially contested by Tyke Boom, but wasn't able to get their hand to it. And the ball goes into touch on the halfway line. A very appreciative crowd here from what we can hear. Anytime the ball goes out, there is a little bit of applause that goes around the ground. The AB's loss uh, was the smelling salts they needed to catch. Uh, wake up and play like they are meant to play in the World Cup. No doubt New Zealand will be all fire against France come game one, says sighted. Now line out throw this time. Going to the front, nicely taken. Now Tom Stewart is the man starting at number two in this game for the Irish. That is due to the injury that we saw at Dan Sheehan. Rob Hearing will be coming off the bench. Ed Fidel, three minutes into this game, calls the mark inside of his 22, taps it, and kicks it almost straight sideways. Even the crowd are applauding that one, so I think they'll clap anything. Because that is probably one of the worst kicks that Ed Fidel could have struck in that moment. Unfortunately, getting it off the side of the boot. And now the Irish are right in the attacking scenario that they want to be. Come on, Ireland. A big win, please. Uh, just to let the rest of the know, or the rest know you are improving with every game, says Patrick. Yeah, because a lot of people would say that the Irish in the last game up against England, they weren't quite able to fire the way that they normally would. Nice backline movement here for Samoa after the drop ball from Ireland at line-out time. Now Jonathan Tamatene shifting out, out to the right-hand side. It's going to be Talini Su 
I think number six, and that's the thing. Samoa have got plenty of options in that loose forward trio. That will be the penalty given to Samoa for not rolling away against, I believe, who is that? Who is that man? That is Tom Stewart. I didn't realize he had hit I swear he didn't have it before. And while I've licked my runes, or sorry, wounds, and through the power of bourbon, I'm happy to report I'm back to full health, says Blue. Until tomorrow when you're hungover, but... I remember someone on one of these live streams told me the best way to avoid a hangover is to keep drinking. That is not good advice, though. Be sure to drink responsibly, everyone. And I, Hamish, hope you took a gargle uh, for your voice after the Fiji game. You are the best, best, the best. I think that is maybe from Penelope. Thank you very much. Yeah, the voice is still holding up not too badly, which is hopefully going to be the case throughout the whole of the Rugby World Cup as well. Nice run forward this time from Chris Vui. Playing number four and also co-captain in this fixture. Quick hands from Jonathan Tamatine out towards Stephen Luatua. Samoa 40 metres out from the Irish line. Rush defence there. I think the Samoan tackled himself. It was Lima Sapawanga. Almost ends up losing the ball and now he has. And the breakdown rush defence from Samoa is not effective this time as the offload is found for Ireland. Charge down ball though. Now falls back into their 22. Another loose ball. Jimmy O'Brien just able to get their hands to it. And there's a knock on from the Irish. And Samoa now have the scrum from inside of the Irish territory. And I there from South Africa says Julius. Welcome in mate. Hope you are doing extremely well. Jimmy O'Brien not happy with what has just happened there. Unfortunately the ball just a little bit scrappy. But it was great work in the breakdown initially from Ireland to be able to get that turnover. Just offloaded up from Ryan Beard. Charge down kick of Mac Hansen. <coughs> we have good there why the Irish are uh, laying in green or playing in green. There's no colour clash. I think it's it's a bit strange, isn't it? Because I would have thought that that kind of light green that they've got alongside blue wouldn't be too bad. I know that it's something to do with maybe colour blindness, but also just the alternative strip. Yeah, it's, it's a bit confusing because I think we saw Springboks Argentina both wore their away kits because uh, the home kit of the Springboks, no, the away kit of the Springboks didn't match nicely. Jonathan Tabatine now goes out to Ed Fido. We have to interrupt that because he is very close to the try line but bumped in a touch by Connor Murray alongside one of the big Fords, Ian Henderson. As any of you Irish says glow so I think we've got a few Irish Viewers in the chat, and will you cover all matches of the Rugby World Cup? Will you only do commentary on the big matches? We will be doing as many of those matches as physically possible. The plan is to do every single one, but of course, there are always little things that could happen. So 99% of the games we are hoping to cover. All right, that's a lot. Oh, that's my lot fed and time to get up on TKL's game two. Fair play, I'm still glowing after Fiji beating the English. My dad is 93. He's glowing too, bless uh, the old bugger. Says Kerno Vic, but the ball is put into touch by Ireland. Decent kick from Connor Murray. But we're seeing a lot of pressure being put on early on from Samoa, although someone did say that Samoa would start this match quick and then from there maybe Ireland start to find their momentum later on in the half. Say la la lamb now. A line out throw here. Ireland defending well, not allowing too many metres to be made a majority of the time. Now to the short side. For Samoa, the ball has gone into Dutch for Amalosi Island. Says Marco. Hamish looks more Scottish than Irish. Says Coding. I think I'm like, I can't remember the percentages, but my sister did one of those DNA test things. I uh, think I ended up, well, I'll be very similar, seeing as I'm, I'm related to her, but I think she was like 30% Scottish or something, like way back in the day, and then about maybe 20% Irish or something like that. So a little bit of both. And hey, Ireland surely going to beat them good. Uh, from Kenya, love rugby, says the basics. Big run forward from Ryan Beard. And the crowd enjoyed it as he ran straight over the top of Say La La Lam. And ball being put high from Ireland. Trying to go to the aerial attack early on. And the ball is bouncing nicely back into their hands after the knock-on from Samoa. Looked like Henderson wanted to play half. But instead, we'll leave this one for Tom Stewart. Now looking for the cross kick. From Jack Crowley. Goes straight out to Mac Hansen. And all he has to do is run it in. But instead gives it off to Jimmy O'Brien on his inside. And Ireland get the first try 
in this fixture. I'm half Irish, half Cornish, uh, Cornish Patrick, uh, Patrick, and I'm proud of my Celtic roots too. Says Kunovic and Troy Island says Stephen G, and yeah, I know it would be tight, says Barry there. But Jimmy O'Brien, only a seventh international cap, and has got himself a try here. Early on, it was that counter-attack play from the Irish. It was actually Caitlin Doris rather than Ryan Beard who had that massive run forward. The cross kick from Crowley found the hands of Matt Hansen who could have backed himself to go to the corner but unselfishly passed it on the inside. And Matt Hansen with the assist. Jimmy O'Brien with the try. Did Matt Hansen not hear my prediction for the first try? Says Brian, he obviously didn't. He decided to give it away to Jimmy O'Brien who I don't think anyone predicted for this one. I'm going Manu Samoa, says Funda there. Hello to all uh, the Irish watching the game here. Says Patrick, and I should mention, this is the place to be for the Rugby World Cup if you do want to have a chat about the games and also have a bit of commentary going throughout it as well. But looks like now Jack Crowley have to line up this kick. Only got 22 seconds remaining on the clock, which should get it done in time. And he has got that one down the middle, so that will now make the score 7-0 for Ireland after the first 10 minutes. One moment, I'm going to sneeze. I have sneezed. Anyone wondering? Oh, I didn't hear it. I, I muted the mic. <laughs> I'm getting good at that. I accidentally missed it when we were doing a podcast and just sneezed extremely loudly, which interrupted the whole flow of things. Unfortunately, now, speaking of flow, Ireland's starting to find their flow state. Inside of their own 22, no injuries, please, says Martin. And when do Australia and France play? They are going to uh, be playing 3.45 a.m. tomorrow night. So... Yeah, early morning for us here in New Zealand. I did DNA tests recently. Turns out I'm 10% Irish. Do I lay a uh, claim to be an Irish supporter, says Nathan. What was your other 90% though, Nathan? Whereabouts else did you have ticked off? The ground fourth from? I believe that would have been Duncan Paiaua playing the halfback. And that will be the penalty against Kaylin Norris. Some might have a chance against England this World Cup. They're looking stronger than in previous years, says Robinson. Yeah, I'd agree. I think Samoa um, have come a long way in the last maybe year or so, and that is mainly actually due to Moana Pacifica. At the end of the day, like, yes, they haven't quite been able to perform the same way as the Fijian draw, but they've still had some pretty decent performances. Like, the hardest thing for Moana Pacifica is they had so many games where they almost won, but one little moment was the difference. Everyone has Irish in them, says Barry. And are you allergic to something, Hemi? Says Spider Mech, I'm probably allergic to something, I'll say. I think it's just hay fever, though. So pollen. That's all right. I took a test. I'm 99% potato. Don't know how much Irish that is. Says Cited. 99% potato. Being able to type with your other 1% is quite impressive. 10 nil for Argentina playing at the moment. So, yeah. I think it's going to be a relatively one-sided affair for the Argentines. Their matchup against Spain. Now it's going to be a kick downfield. Decent clearing kick. From the Irish, quick throw taken by Samoa, trying to play this game at tempo. Kicked up high. And this looks like it's going out on the full. Yes, it is. A bit of a mistake there at number 15 from Duncan Paiua. Are you a, you're just a spud fella? A good luck with that, says Kernovic. It might be try time for Samoa, says Stephen G. In there as well. Now Ireland on the halfway line. And they're in a pretty decent position. Again, this is another opportunity for them to try and run in towards the try line. See that Toulon are playing Bayern and only about 44 seconds as well in the top 14. That is a competition that is still running all throughout these international fixtures. Same with the Bunnings NPC here in New Zealand. Three games taking place today. Close to the touchline. Brilliant bit of work from Samoa though to be able... Oh, bit of push and shove already. Starting to kick off. Matt Cancer not too happy with Duncan Paiola and the feeling is mutual. I think that was for Paiwa not giving them the ball, I assume. Or I think Matt Cancer was just trying to fire himself up in this game. Come on, Ireland, another try within the next 10 minutes. Yeah, Samoa wrestled Jimmy O'Brien into touch, then tried to rip the ball off, and Matt Cancer didn't like that because he didn't want the quick throw in. And then from there, the problem started, I guess, becoming more prominent. Oh, mistake there from Jonathan Tamatena, accidental offside. 
against the Samoans. There's a knock on and then an offside. Tamatino saying, I didn't touch him with my hands, although if it still hit him, then I believe his teammate is still in an offside position. And come on, Uso, put some numbers on the board, says Spider Mech. Should mention that my scoreboard does not want to give the Irish. There we go. Given the conversion. Hey, Pat Cousin, uh, will you stop it? Uh, I can't see all of the game law, says Kerno Vic. Offer for Pat, Patrick Green or no? Uh, to answer your question, I'm 10% Irish, but only 24% Northern European, 30% English. Guess my family had some Viking, most Norwegian, says Nathan Barnes. Johnny Sexton watching on here. Hang on. That was Keith Earl sitting next to him, wasn't it? They've actually, I think they've made the change of Jacob Stockdale into the starting lineup. My apologies, but not Keith Earl. Now five metres out from the line, Ireland trying to get this rolling ball progressing towards the try line. Connor Murray has his hands on the ball. Blues being told not to change their bind. Being told to use it. Short pass off to the left hand side to Stuart McClowski. Now Murray again, flat ball, but a good shot coming in on him. Mac Hansen stepping near the touchline in Samoa. Try and drive him into touch. They've said he's just in the field of play. Now the arm is out. And it's going to be Samoa with the line out throw now. It's an interesting scenario. Because. Oh, Wayne Barnes has just said, if you shout at me, I'm going to penalise you. So go away in his English accent. But yeah, it's interesting how because of the moisture, soon as you're in that five meter channel near the touchline, if any player gets a hold of you, you're pretty much getting slid into touch. It's like you're a temping bowling ball. Or just any bowling ball. I assume bowling balls would slide relatively well in the bigger scheme of things. All right, we will go like this. We will go. That, there we go. Now it's going to be round the side of the breakdown for the Samoans again. Just trying to make those few extra metres and another penalty. Okay, Wayne Barnes has just said to Ireland, that's three times in a row you've screamed at me. So I'm going to give the penalty to Samoa. So whoever that is for Ireland, better stop talking back. It's actually Tom Stewart, a man who's only recently been added into the team. I have an Irish passport. Mum uh, was Irish. Granny Alice Lily too. Hey, that passport is handy. And Nathan Barnes, uh, aren't the English North European? Says Fleshin. And Matt Canson. I think he's just done enough to keep that ball in the field of play. So Ireland, once again, will end up with the ball in hand, putting this one up high. Matt Canson chasing after it. Nicely taken to the back. And the mark is called by Lema Sopawangi. He was a little bit hesitant to say what happened to the All Blacks. When they do the haka, you can see something is wrong. Hat moment. Or what moment I know, or that moment. I know South Africa win, says Johannes Bain. Yeah, they did not play well, the ABs. But South Africa, they need credit as well. They played an absolutely phenomenal game, good in the forwards, putting that pressure on. And yeah, Kenan Moody seems like he could be quite a prospect for number 13 if they do decide to go that way. And Irish a bit too mouthy towards the refs, says Sighted. In there. I mean... Tom Stewart is. I think it's just been him, to be fair, out of the whole Irish side. And Kasamoa, KO the Irish today, says annoy. Hopefully no KOs, no injuries. Will be ideal. Nice little chip in behind from Jack Crowley. Chasing on to this one was McClowski, but it is going to be cleaned up there at the back by the Irish number 15. Or well, sorry, by the Samoan number 15 again, although it's been taken back. And come on, Samoa, do a Fiji, says Johannes. And also the English... Uh, what we Celts refer to as watered down Germans, says Kurnovic. But do let me know your predictions, ladies and gentlemen, for who will be able to get the next try in this fixture. We have already seen the one for Jimmy O'Brien. Next one could be just around the corner. We are 18 minutes into the game. It's flying by at the moment. But the Irish now with Tom Stewart throwing that one to the back, looping around. Nice inside bottom, Matt Hanson. But the pass was forward. Says Wayne Barnes, he is all over it at the moment. I mentioned about how he loves the feel of the whistle in his gob. And and that's what he said quite a bit of. Well, South Africa just too good. Uh, for our boys, they have no complaints. Uh, we were not good enough. 
says Spider Mick, it's Armour for a three pointer, says Sighted. And Anson says Brian, and tell you what, Anson was close again, just received that four pass. A scrum for the Samoans once more. And this game, with the rain that has been falling, scrums will be maybe a little bit stop start, but slippery underfoot. And there I'm going to become a loyal uh, on your commentary for this Rugby World Cup 2023, says Vikas. Thank you very much, mate. Hugely appreciated. And yeah, we've got plenty of rugby coming just around the corner. Alongside the live commentary, we also do the lineups for all the teams. So we let you know exactly who is in the lineups before they have taken place. Normally, as soon as they are announced and everything along those lines. Plus, previews, reviews, everything fun like that. So, yeah, if you are new, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Plenty more coming in the near future. And even though the games are on at random hours of the night here in New Zealand, we're going to be doing a lot of all-nighters. The one and only Hamish, a.k.a. The, uh, the Goat, says, Jobo, I had a goat down here somewhere. Which sounds like a weird statement. But I don't know where the goat went. Ah, the goats disappeared. I had a little miniature goat for some reason. And, yeah, it's kind of disappeared. It's just hiding. 20 minutes into this game already. Number one can help uh, where they were born or where they are born. I'm English because I was born in England. If I was born in Germany, I'd be German. Says Neil. And also we have got their Barnes. Never like the Irish typical English lawyer. <laughs> Says Carver Pitch. That's going back for the penalty against... Island again at this time, scrum. Feet going up from underneath. Or well, in fact, it was the knee down for the Irish number one, Kian Henley. Or Kian Healy, I should say. Paul C for the World Cup is looking interesting after that win by Fiji. Certainly is. Paul D as well after that loss of England. It makes you wonder whether or not we are going to see you know, that possibility of a huge upset. Come in, Samoa are in that group. Looks like Kian Healy may have some sort of injury here. I think he just headbutted the medic accidentally. I think he was trying to push his arms out and gave him a flying headbutt. Uh, the question, or well, I question the one at the bunker. Shouldn't interfere too much. Should leave it to the person on the field, says Spider Mick. And next time, they won't be the same. All Blacks feel sorry for France. Says Johannes. Looks like Kian Healy is actually going to be making his way off the field now. He's done something to his leg. And maybe that is why the leg gave way. We mentioned about how we didn't want to see injuries in this contest, and Kian Healy's a big one to lose. Jeremy Luckman now making his way out onto the park. But that does not look good for Kian Healy. Right knee, or right leg at least, for Healy. He's got the injury, and he can't actually put any weight on it. Last thing that they wanted before this Rugby World Cup, because that would be Dan Sheehan and Kian Healy both gone. Unless Sheehan's back in time. I don't actually know the full extent of his injury. If anyone does know, do let me know. But I want to say it wasn't anything hugely serious, but it's still not going to be him playing for a couple more weeks. Now say La La Lamb throwing the ball and stolen by the Irish at line-out time. Mac Hansen has received the bounce of the ball. Nice run four from Caelan Doris, who will just throw himself at the line nine times out of ten, although this time he's knocked it on, so Fritz Lee is able to clean it up. Sheehan should be back. See Shane Healy there. And also, uh, there's that injury I didn't want, says Martin. Yeah, it did look more serious than the Sheehan one from earlier on. It's going to be a barnage over from the knock-on. 40 metres out, Samoa now once again on the attack. Running forward was Chris Vui, the co-captain. Tamatine going to the short side. Talini Su shut down by three Irish defence, losing about three metres in the process. Tamatine quick hands getting out to Chris Vui again. He's been very busy. Great commentary, mate. Uh, Neil from England says Neil Cooper. Do appreciate it a lot. It's kicked high from Tamatine. Running on to this is Jimmy O'Brien, but he has knocked it backwards. Ireland still managed to retain the ball after it was loose. About 25 metres out from their line, Connor Murray. Setting it up for Luckman to have his first carry since making his way onto the park for Kian Healy. And now I believe they'll go for the box kick. You've got there. Neil, you came. Your lot came from Germany. Uh, you have German genes, says Gunnowick. And also seeing as Ireland beat England by 19, Samoa so keep within that score, they might take it in, uh, England, says Brian. Tamatine, back into the pocket to Lima Sapawanga. Looks like he's going for the up and under inside of the 22. Mark is taken by Connor Murray. Takes a deep breath, 
not going to slow this down a little bit. Too much stop start ref or too much stop start ref should let the game flow. Uh, except high tackles, knock on a forward pass, says Spider Mick. And also, we've got the ABs need to adopt to those English refs, Samish. I'm pretty sure we got English refs for our pool matches, says Jobo. Although I know that the first match up against France, they've got Yako Piper as the first referee. See there though, Jimmy O'Brien running onto that ball, trying to take it cleanly. It has been very hard to judge those kicks when lining them up, just mainly because of the extra bit of moisture, a little bit of slipperiness around Spain. 24-0 at the moment. Oh, sorry, Argentina 24-0. You're guaranteed to have injuries against Samoa, but it's the perfect game to harden up before the World Cup, says Barry. And also agreed, says Blue. Now, Stephen Luatua trying to step around. We've hardly seen Josh Van den Flaer, which is a little bit surprising because normally in a game where Ireland have their backs against the wall, he's the player who can normally change the momentum, but I don't think he's really had too many chances to get into the breakdown and actually compete for the ball. But that's going to be a knock-on from Jacob Stockdale, which now means that Samoa, they did have the advantage. It's kicked into the Irish player, so now it will be the line-out. For some, oh, and Wayne Barnes can be very fussy sometimes, stops the flow, says Brian. Yeah, we've seen that already in this game. We've seen quite a few stoppages. That advantage he let play out, but the ball ended up pretty much in the same spot. And now it is the line-out throw for Samoa, and it's been well contested by Ireland throughout that first 24 and a half minutes. I can't believe how quick this game is going. It's currently 7, 11 a.m. here in New Zealand. Ken Healy looks like trying to get back to his feet now on the sideline yeah hopefully not as serious as it looks and my Samoa says there was save Suru now a cross kick again attempted by the Samoans this time nicely taken by Jimmy O'Brien wrestled down to the turf a little bit of a counter ruck there from the Samoans who just managed to keep their feet but brilliant counter ruck from Ireland to be able to keep it in their hands that will be knocked on this time by Tom Stewart now the line break for Samoa Josh Van and Flair Gets in, steals the ball. That was one of the fastest advantages I have ever seen from Wayne Barnes. And that will go into touch. Great kick downfield from Ireland. Would be interesting to see them go in at halftime draw. Says yesterday, it would certainly test out this Irish side. And I feel like in these warm-up games for the Rugby World Cup, you do want to be tested. So Tom Stewart, he knocked that ball on. Some, uh, I think they made maybe two metres off it. And then they went straight away from that uh, advantage and bring back Nigel Owens, legend master referee, says Kuno Wig now say la la lam, another chance here for the Samoans at line out time, they've had quite a few of those throughout the early stages but every single one of them it looks like there is a chance that there could be a turnover for Ireland although this time not contested they go to the front, they weren't sure what the plan was going to be but say la la lam loops around and they do manage to get the ball into his hands, Sopawanga once again going for that up and under technique. Jimmy O'Brien knocking the ball on. Now the counter-attack for Samoa. That has happened quite a few times throughout this half already. And in fact, it is every time they go for that up and under. That looks cynical. Around the side of the breakdown. So Wayne Barnes playing advantage. Now short ball. Brilliant run onto it. By Tamua Manu just couldn't quite get it onto the grubber. He just dropped it. It's an advantage knock on now to Ireland. And come on, Samoa, if Fiji can do it, you can do it. Come on, says spider Mick and bring back Buck, says Blue there. Tamua Manu, he looked for the kick in behind, but just ended up with the ball leaving his hands and also didn't quite get the boot to it, which didn't help him out. Tamua Manu, if he got this grubber away, it could have been danger time out on the wing, but it was well cleaned up by Ian Henderson. I believe the scrum feed now will be in favour of the Irish. This is something we haven't seen too much anyway in terms of them having the scrum feed. Tackles made, we've seen 36 from Ireland, only missing the two. Samoa have made 30, and they have only missed the three. Does Rokokoko still play? He does not. No, he has retired. I'm not sure if he's tied up with any coaching role or anything along those lines, or if he's completely stepped away from rugby. Connor Murray. It's a very strong Irish accent in that four pack. I was trying to work out what was said and I couldn't work it out, but I believe the front row talking to each other. Big push from Samoa, driving Ireland backwards, but the ball did come out nicely. So now Ireland inside of their 22. Jimmy O'Brien kicking it off his left boot. 
It's a decent amount of distance. It's gone backwards. A lot of trouble there. For, I believe it would have been Duncan Paiua. And in the end, crowd are booing this one. Okay, the crowd are booing because the ball, I believe it may have hit the Irish player and they've given an Irish line out. Or are they talking about that might have been the line out, in fact, they were looking at? Yeah, unfortunately, Duncan Pyle, the ball was trying to run away from him. And Ireland now have got themselves the line out thrown nicely, whipped in by Tom Stewart, the rolling mall, starting to make a meter or two. They've been told to use it once by Barnes. And it looks like Murray has realised that one's not going too far. So it goes off now with a short ball off to Jack Crowley, who almost managed to pierce straight through the gap. Now looping around. In fact, it was McClowski, now Henshaw, up to 22 metres out, gets a couple post contact. Murray goes across now to the right hand side, inside ball to the left. Samoa putting a lot of pressure into the breakdown. Does Samoa have a Brian Lima replacement? They do not know. Still tied up with the sevens. The old chiropractor. And go Manu Samoa says Melu and Samoa looking good, says Polly Bear. They're keeping it close for this first 30 minutes or so. Looking out at 90 Mile Beach while I watch this game. What a great life, says Blue. Yeah, hopefully the weather's looking a bit nicer for you than it is here. We've got a bit of wind at the moment. Uh, which hopefully will go away. We've also got a bit of a frost, I think. Which is a bit rough. Now Jonathan Tamatine. Another tackle inside of the Samoan 22. So just looking for a few extra metres here. Off the kick. Uh, why is 90 mile beach 55 miles long? Says sighted. A good question. Maybe it looks like it's 90 miles. Or I don't actually know where the name came from. Maybe a guy like tried to walk it out. And then lost count. So he's like 90. Rounded up. Easy enough. That's a big boom box. That the Samoan side have got just in front of them, or at least the coaching staff have got. I'd certainly be blasting the tunes throughout what to cause an upset here. They are $21 underdogs if Ireland. Uh, if Ireland the threat, why well, only seven on the board? That tells you, says Spider Meek. I mean, it does tell you that they are a little bit rustier than that Guinness Six Nations, but we've got to remember they are the defending champs of the Six Nations. They've caused some great upsets in the last little while and still have to be looked at as a contender. And can you go 90 miles per hour in that stretch? Not legally, but I guess you theoretically could. I guess. And it started by uh, talking in the pub. Some guy said 90 miles is going to be charged down there by Ireland. Oh, Caelan Doris almost able to put the ball down. He's almost ended up flying into the barricade. WWE style, but it's going to be a partial knock on there. And Ireland, I've got these little glimpses or glimpses. Gl gl what's that word? Gl glimpses, that's the word. I was trying to say too many syllables. Yeah, got little glimpses of moments where all of a sudden they look like they could score just like that, but Samoa are doing well to slightly mitigate them. And absolutely says Blue. So close, Dor uh, Doris. Says Alden Emerald. I think that was partially charged down off the 22 dropout, which is quite impressive. We don't normally see that. Now, Kaylin Norris. Tackled low by Stephen Luatua. Out to the left-hand side, Connor Murray decides he'll go with his own run. Now McClowski thought about picking it up, but does instead join the breakdown to keep it on the side of the Samoans. Big shot coming in on Tom Stewart. In fact, it was Josh Van and Flair this time. Driven backwards. Samoans' defence have been relatively solid throughout this game. Yes, they did concede that early try of Mac Hansen, or sorry, Jimmy O'Brien. Great work in the air from Robbie Henshaw to slap it back onto the side of the Irish, but then it was slightly slapped back. And Samoa take the ball, counter ruck there from the Irish. A lot of pressure coming in now. And now they have been told that they aren't allowed to touch it. Nigel Wong doing very well. Is this a full strength Irish side? Says Surin, I mean, some would say no, but still a very good looking side overall in terms of skill. I'll show you, uh, this is the lineup that they've gone with. So maybe not so much... And some of those four positions, but overall you got Josh Van and Flair, Kaylin Doris, Murray is out there, Henshaw. Keith Thills is actually not out on that wing. So they haven't got James Lowe or Keith Thills in this game. Instead, it's Stockdale 
and Mac Hansen. So, like, there's still a lot of brilliant Irish players in there, but they just haven't quite been able to turn it into many points yet. And so, I might have given a good account themselves in the first half, says Brian. Come on, Ireland, you are better than that, says Patrick. And also, we have good there. Why do you look formal? Or why did you look formal yesterday? Hamish says, I'll it was because we had the big match taking place between the Springboks and the All Blacks. So I decided I would dress to impress for that game. And also, if I didn't wear the suit, I would have got a lot more stick than if I did wear the suit. Because when I don't wear it and people feel it's a big match, they get angry at me and tell me off. Nicely thrown in, although well stolen by Samoa. It's loose. And Talini Su just manages to regain that one. One metre from his own line. Jonathan Tamatine looking for the ball. Wayne Barnes was playing Where's Waldo and actually told him where it was. Or Where's Wally, depending on whereabouts you are in the world. No, legally. Says Blue. Our watch, second half, Samoa will be tight. Says Cash Flows. And we have got there uh, defending for long periods. Uh, is more tired there, uh, tiring than attacking. It certainly is. So far, tackles have been relatively even between these two sides. Uh, thank you for dressing up. South Africa appreciates it, says Colleen. And also, let's go Samoa, says Nishaka. Because I believe Samoa, if I'm not wrong, it's currently about 8.30 a.m. Am I correct in that statement? And I guess for you guys in South Africa, it's actually around 9.30 p.m. So a relatively late night game. And in Ireland, I believe it's 8.30 p.m., I think. If my time zones are correct, or 8.21, I'm a little bit ahead of myself. 34 minutes through this game currently. Jonathan Tamatine will put it back into the pocket to Lima Sopawanga, who will once again not look for touch, but instead look to put the Irish number 15 under pressure, Jimmy O'Brien, but he's taken that one beautifully and now run forward. Ed Fidel makes the low tackle on him. In fact, it was Lay now going off to the left-hand side. Numbers for the Irish, but they go on the inside of Mac Hansen. Dragged down 22 metres out from the line. Ed Fidel decided to try and get in that breakdown, but now it's left a gap on the outside. That one, I think it hit him in the chest, which means Samoa will have a runaway try here. They may check this one just to make sure, but Samoa with their number 15, Duncan Paiaua, have now got themselves the try. Tell email, they should sponsor you for more suits. Sears Hamilton and 1030 in Istanbul. And also we have got there. And the chat, yeah, 8.22 in the UK, says Patrick Green. They believe it's hit him in the face. So it's not a knock-on. He's head-butted the ball and then from there picked it up and scored the try. I uh, love your commentary, very um, based. Says profitable, par uh, profitable pathways. And also we have their way, says yesterday. But Murray, he was going to the short side. This could have been a try for the Irish had it not been for Duncan Paiua's nose. And it hit him in the square in the noggin. And the try is good. Samoa move themselves up to five now. And yes, Samoa says, Flesh and a nice stuff. Samoa says, Alden Emerald. And uh, yep, Samoa are up for the says blue. Duncan Pyle are taking the opportunity. They have spent a majority of this half inside of their own territory. The thing that has found them a little bit of success, Samoa, is those up and unders. The Pacific boys are fairly pretty good today. Happy to see, says Siren. And while that makes the second half interesting, says Brian. There as well. Now Lima Supawanga. This is an important kick here. And it has gone over. Sounds like there's quite a few Samoan supporters in attendance for this game as well. But that now makes it 7 all between these two sides. With only 3 minutes remaining in the first half. But McClowski just ended up bouncing off the hand of Robbie Henshaw. Who wasn't actually expecting it to be as far behind him. As it was, then from there, it went straight into the nose of Duncan Paiua. Was able to regather and run away for the try. Was that defended with his face? It was. I wonder if anyone else in the rugby world might start doing that rather than the deliberate knockdown. Just throw your face at it. That's a great tactic. you got to have a tough head, though, because I don't think many players just want to go around headbutting things. Now... Samoa just out from their own 22 metre line. Jonathan Tamatine rolling the ball back. Has been told to use it again. Great game and well done again. Hamish says pubs of South Africa. Thank you very much. And of course, we have got plenty more rugby action taking place just a little bit later on with France versus Australia. That will be at 3.45 a.m. New Zealand time. It's going to be a knock-on in favour of the Samoans again. 
Advantage over. It's kicked away. Jimmy O'Brien now returning fire on his left boot. Nicely taken in the back by the try scorer Duncan Pio. A tier two teams are a thing of the past now for sure. Says dead tune. Will I have to log off? Ah, uh, come on, lads, wake up. Says Dennis and Irish looking pretty, or Ireland looking pretty average. I think both South Africa and New Zealand would have dismantled them, says Johan. And Samoans uh, don't mind head button, says Nazi Williams. Yeah, unfortunately, it's been up and unders. Underneath that high ball, Samoa have not, or sorry, Ireland have not been able to take a majority of those catches. We have Gadea, who do you guys have for winning the World Cup? It's a good question. I think that this weekend's probably changed a few people's minds. Overall, and remember there will be lots of subs on. At the start of the second half, says Patrick Green. And yeah, with the change of Kian Healy already due to injury, it looks like Chris Vui. He may have taken a bit of a knock to the back of the head. Just making sure he's all right. And also we've got their Manu Samoa giving the Irish a run for their money. Love it, says Alfie. And that's the thing, Samoa came into this game as $21 underdogs. They now currently sit at it's $11 underdogs for this game so quite a drastic change from the start and where's your tie tonight mate says Dennis so because we had a couple live streams a bit more spaced out I just went with the hoodie for tonight do you have oh, I did have France but without Intermac I now think New Zealand says yesterday it's going to be kicked up high once again Jimmy O'Brien knocking that ball on it's happened every time so far although the Samoans have they got themselves the ball out the back? They certainly do. Now, say la la lamb. Decides to drive forward at the line. Tamatine to the short side. Trying to go for that pass over the top. Mikulowski cleans up. And also we have Gadi Agustin Pulu. Uh, playing today says uh, Nishaka. Not for this game. I don't believe. Looking through at the lineup. I know off the bench. In fact, I can show you who they've got off the bench for this game. And the Irish, they have made the one change already. And that is the change of Luckman. That is due to the injury that we saw of Kian Healy. But Iritari, Enri, Christian, Leliofano, and Naria Fumai going to be the back replacements for the Samoans. Casey Byrne and Gary Ringrose for the Irish. Currently 15 seconds remaining in this half. Now Ireland could go into this halftime 7 points to 7. But Samoa, with the fact that they have got this scrum feed, they might... Just have one last crack. I'm making a lot of sloppy mistakes tonight, says Alden Emerald. And some are good in the rain, says Polly Bell. I think they're just using the rain more to their advantage. And to be honest, it's more than we would normally see the Samoans using the rain, which is, I guess, quite nice to see that they are evolving with those tactics, knowing that the wet conditions mean that they can use that in their favour. Massive scrum from Samoa. They've got themselves the advantage there. And that is a huge push. From the Pacific Island boys. That is going to add a little bit more of a question mark for Ireland here. Because um, oh, they might consider going for another scrum. Unless they take, I think they'll actually go for the three here. Give themselves that lead going into the second half. But absolutely massive shove. Finley Bilham got thrown out the side of the breakdown. Or out the side of that scrum. Tamatine very happy with it. Luckman under huge amounts of pressure. Bill M shaking his head. He's not happy. And Sopawong are going to be looking to try and give Samoa the lead going into the second half. We're now making sloppy mistakes for a few games. Or we've been making sloppy mistakes for a few games now, says Stephen G. I know the ball is slippery. Uh, but still, we really need to get our act together, says Eldon. And Ireland have nothing to prove and no one to fear. A nice injury, free rear card, free draw. Will do, says Kernovic, although they've already had an injury of Kian Healy. Thea McFarlane having a great game so far, says MIGP. Now Lima Sipawonga, the kick is over, and that is going to be halftime, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't think many people expected me to say this, but at halftime, Samoa leading over Ireland, 10 points to 7. Tim Nenai is playing today. He is not. Sadly got injured in the Samoa versus Barbarians game. And he was actually playing for the Barbarians in that fixture up against the Samoan teammates, and they did end up injuring him, which is a bit of a shame. But Samoans, first half, they have looked very strong. They've been able to use the rain to their advantage, going for big high kicks, which have then led to Jimmy O'Brien dropping the ball about six times already in that first half. I know what's wrong with the Irish team tonight. The rain, 
Ah, not used to rain over here, says Dennis. And I also think Box will make it four, says Profitable Pathways. And if Australia win it, uh, it will be because of Hanson, not Eddie the Mouth, says Blue. And well, unexpected rugby this weekend, says Cider. Yeah, we've seen some upsets. In fact, even looking at that South African New Zealand game, South Africa were the underdog going into that fixture. Fiji were the underdogs. Bigger underdog than South Africa, of course, getting themselves the win over the English. And now Samoa. They came in as underdogs for this game about $16. Then they were up to $26 at one point throughout that first half. Now sitting as $7 underdog. So I wonder whether or not they can hold on. And that's why unexpected rugby this weekend says cited. And we have got the Island uh, need not try too hard. Would you, says Gunovic? An excellent job from Samoa. Will Ireland put it, uh, put it together in the second half? I believe that they'll be a lot more clinical in the second 40 minutes Island because I don't believe... They can really be any less uh, clinical than they were. Like they had that really nice play with Matt Canson passing the ball to Jimmy O'Brien. First try scored. It was early on in the fixture, and it seemed like okay, it's going to be another day at the office for Ireland. Then Samoa they started going for those high kicks. Every time that that ball would go down or end up coming down, there was a knock on from the Irish or at least a drop ball. Duncan Piawa getting himself the try for the Irish that was, or sorry for the Samoans that was due. To a little bit of a mistake, they ended up passing it into his face. Uh, true story. And Argentina 31 versus the three of Spain. Is it an Irish second team playing? I mean, there's a few players missing, but I would still call this a very strong lineup. These are the guys out there. Matt Hansen, phenomenal try scorer and ability. Robbie Henshaw in there. Connor Murray starting. Kalen Doris, Josh Van den Flair, Tyke Byrne and Henderson as the lock and duo. Bealham in the front row. That is rather than Tyke Furlong. 54 tackles made for Ireland in that first half compared to the 50 of Samoa. Similar metres made. Five penalties against the Irish compared to the two of Samoa. We've seen quite a few knock-ons throughout this match. Here we go. Anyone wondering? Half, uh, half time in this match. 10 points for Samoa. And seven for Ireland. This is the full side, maybe. And here's the second team. Says Patrick Green. And i got to give Samoa credit, though. They are playing very well so far. And also we have got there Samoa Argentina to progress against Oz and Fiji. Says an and big defense from Samoa. Hopefully they can maintain it in the second half. And good for Samoa. As for rain, Ireland has lots of rain. That is why Ireland is emerald green. Good Celtic grass. Rained on regularly with great soil underfoot. And I'd love to see a live commentary collaboration. Uh, between you and the rugby guru from South Africa says, I think we've actually done videos in the past, myself and Johan. We actually, we used to play a bit of Rugby Challenge 4 and we did a Rugby Challenge 4 bingo. And we have actually had him on for a post-match review, I believe, as well on the channel. But, yeah, I think he's going to be possibly coming on the podcast soon. So keep an eye out for that. I need to start kicking the leather off the ball. And this tells me Samoa can beat England and chicken cheese. And onion toasties, anyone, says Nazi Worms. That does sound quite nice, actually. I know that George has come around later on today. I'm not sure what our plans are as of yet, seeing as it's relatively windy. I think we were considering going to the golf course, but if that wind's blowing, it might make it relatively tricky. What did you think of the England-Fiji game? Didn't see it, says Dennis. It was a brilliant, hearty performance from the Fijians. They just didn't want to give up, and even though they were down early on in that match, they just managed to fire back. And keep putting that pressure on. Sopawanga should be able to control games. As you did for Otago and New Zealand. Says Hanoi. It's Armour win by 10. Let's go Manu. Says MIGP. And also we have got there. In the chat. Wonder if it's the Irish selection for the World Cup tomorrow. Our nerves are setting in. Says Stephen G. And man that sounds yummy still. Got half a box to go yet. Says Blue. They are just showing that first try of Mackenzie Hansen. Passing it off. Or sorry Mac Hansen. Giving the ball to Jimmy O'Brien. Some might say it's a little bit surprising with the fact that Samoa are still considered such heavy underdogs with that first half, but people feel that Ireland in the second 40 should be able to find their momentum back. At the 30-minute mark, Samoa with 41. Now they are $8, says sports fan. Yeah, so just shows you how quickly the odds can change. And I have a feeling that this game, in terms of momentum, could easily change very quickly as well. Ireland looking fairly blunt in attack. Hope 
They can sharpen things up. An island rated first in the world, Samoa 24. I don't know if Samoa are 24. I think Samoa are about 11th or something like that. It might be an underrated team that might win the World Cup, says Steven. And just having pancakes here, yeah, they are grand, are grand yummy. Something that surprised me about the world rankings, though, was that Japan are actually 14th now. I always thought they were a little bit higher, but I believe it's Japan. Italy is 13th. Georgia might be 12th, and then I think it's Samoa 11th, and then into the top 10. Don't understand why people are surprised. Didn't see a competitive game coming. Ireland, uh, Leinster, do not like physical teams, says Matthew. Theo McFarland has been the game changer this game he's doing. Says MIGP. And also we have there. Jimmy needs to drop a super clue. Yeah, he's had quite a few handling errors throughout that first half, unfortunately, for Jimmy O'Brien. Also managed to score himself the try, but you have to wonder whether or not they do counter each other equally or not. We have got there. Uh, the boys will have a shot of whiskey. Says Kerno Wick. Uh, Whip Samo in the second half and Samo Tonga. And Fiji are improving. They certainly are. And I think that is because of the addition of those sides in Super Rugby Pacific. We've seen the Fijian draw players really stepping up for Fiji as of late. You look at someone like a young Caleb Munts. Wasn't really getting that many opportunities. And then now is looking like a real starter for the Fijians. You look through at that four pack. Whether it's Mira Mira, Deria Lange, Ikanaveri. All these boys from the Fijian draw. And then for Moana Pacifica. You look throughout the Samoa and Tonga side and see that kind of inclusion of those players. It's been making a huge difference. Should that try stand, it came off his face. See his dinner, so off the face is not a knock on. You're allowed to use your face. Normally we don't see players doing it because the arms are normally longer, so they normally get to the ball first. But yeah, in this case, it was a try. And please Samoa wins, says Joshua. And also we could Samoa have good players. They just don't usually play well as a team. So it's not really a surprise if they click. They can play well, says sports fan. And a Samoan try was a fluke, though. Pure fluke, says Kevin. Although I guess, yes, luck had to come into it, but it was decent positioning by Duncan Paiua. In fact, he almost read it too well, if that makes sense, because he was almost overrunning it, or else it would have got the hand to it. But it easily could have been an Irish try down the other end. But it was the momentum shifter that Samoan needed to get them back into the game. Maybe a loss will do Ireland good, says Stephen. This weekend has been wild. I should be studying, but I can't keep my eyes off the telly. See, it's critical. And no, Hanoi Mac uh, is loved in Ireland. Uh, USA are tight. Says Kerno Wick, the Rugby World Cup will uh, throw up some big upsets. Wales and England might not get out of their respective pools, for example. Try assist to Duncan's nose. Yeah, I think so. And that's the thing. <laughs> they just shot a replay. It just scones him right in the bridge of the nose. Caught it with the face. I love it when everyone is riding off the ABs. Uh, well played. Or well played by the box. But don't underestimate the power of the ABs, says Boderick. And wonder how this can affect Irish squad selection, says Anoy. I don't think it would change a huge amount, to be honest. I think they're relatively close to the 33-man side that they want. It's more of the injuries that will be concerning. We saw Ken Healy. He ended up with an injury. We saw Dan Sheehan recently get injured, but I think... He's going to be only short-term injury rather than Kean's, which does look like it could be relatively long. Uh, the World Cup squad is tomorrow, says Stephen G. It certainly is. And go the man who says, Gene, I'm not saying anything wrong about that try, just asking. You don't see too many players here butting the ball these days. Says Dennis. Yeah, normally it's mainly because they get their hands to it, like I mentioned. But, you know, if you can get your head out to it, in a way it stops the deliberate knockdown. It's just you'll get hit in the face. So I don't know whether they'll have more players trying that or not. Probably not. I don't think anyone is writing the ABs off at all. Says Dead Tune and Boxer, the ABs must win the World Cup. Says Bianca Maloney there. And trust Samoa to score a try via off their face. Says MIGP and Box will pump this island side. They're overrated. Says Avilamasuku. Hopefully I've said that correctly. Now second half just around the corner, ladies and gentlemen, for this game. It is... Going to be relatively close, hopefully. We do think. That's the thing, though. Ireland could easily come out in the first 20 minutes and just go bang, bang, bang. Three tries on the trot. But there is also that other chance that Samoa can keep it close, keep going for that high ball. It's whether or not it's still raining as much, perhaps. Argentina to go well in the World Cup, says sports fan. And do teams intentionally put themselves under pressure just to get more out of the warm-ups rather than hammering 20 to 30 points wins 
gain nothing, says Siren. I, d I don't think that's the mindset that they'll go with, mainly because I don't think Jimmy O'Brien's willing to drop the ball five times forward for the sake of the team being able to improve because he's probably, if he keeps doing that, he'll lose his spot in the World Cup squad, which is the last thing that he will want. Lemma Sopawang and Ben Lamb are good assets for Samoa. It was a shame to see that Ben Lamb ended up getting injured in that game up against the Barbarians. To try assist by a no, says Sam. Grand Slam champions are overrated. What a Muppet, says Stephen G. And when rugby, or when does the Rugby World Cup start? It starts in two weeks' time. So we are getting extremely close. Before it does come out, we will have a preview of all of the groups alongside our team previews that will be coming out in the near future as well. I think Australia and Fiji will get out of the group and Argentina will, says Eldon. And who do you prefer in the quarterfinal box of Irish as a Kiwi? I think, to be honest, I think New Zealanders, even before, I know that it will sound like, oh, it's because of that last game, but even before that last fixture between South Africa and New Zealand, I believe a lot of Kiwis wanted to see Ireland as New Zealand's opponent, mainly because we saw New Zealand lose that series up against the Irish last year. And I think New Zealand, from what I've heard, a lot of people want to face the Springboks in the final if that is a possibility rather than in the quarters. But there's some very tough games before that point. I remember DuPont chesting the ball forward, uh, retrieving in a mid-air and going on to score a try in an international. And when's Ireland's first game in the Rugby World Cup? That is a great question, Ellie. And luckily, I've got this little thingy that I made. Little thingy, that's a weird way to describe it. I've got a picture. So 1.30 a.m., so that will be 2.30 p.m. Irish time on Saturday afternoon. They will be playing the Romanians. Then they've got their game up against Tonga. The week after, South Africa versus Ireland taking place. That'll be at 9 p.m. Irish time. And then Scotland versus Ireland, a Six Nations rematch taking place as the last game of the pool stages. And then, if they make it through that, they will have the quarterfinals round mid-October. But, yeah, there's some exciting games. It's a toss-up at the moment for me whether England or some might get out of the group, says Alden. And that group could be relatively contested, couldn't it? Because... Japan haven't looked flash, but Japan are the type of side that can cause an upset every once in a while. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of those games, or one of those competitions, that Japan caused someone to miss out because they play really well in that match. I hardly uh, heard anything about Romania, says Neil. They've been playing a few games. I think they've had three warm-up fixtures uh, up against Georgia, which I think they did lose. They've played Portugal, maybe? Or Italy? They've played someone the week prior, but I can't actually remember who it was. And great work on the commentary. Are you presenting during the World Cup? Greetings from Scandinavia. We certainly are, Paul D. Every game of the Rugby World Cup we are planning on doing on the channel. How long does halftime end? It is now going to be just about coming to a close. The players making their way back out onto the field for the second 40 minutes of what has been an exciting first 40 minutes. Italy smash Romania. Says Brian there. And also we think I think Scotland and Samoa. Says Benjamin. Uh, sorry, Benjamin. And also we have got there. Tonga will give Ireland a good game as well. Says Tupo. I mean, we're talking about that physicality in that first half. And maybe that is something that Tonga can use to their advantage. And their game up against Ireland. You won't believe this. But I enjoy your cov of these way more than the live Irish co uh, coverage of this game. Says everything about what you're doing, mate. Keep it up. Good job, says Dennis. Thank you very much. Hugely appreciate it. And it's always been the goal to be able to either provide commentary for you guys who aren't able to see the games or just have somewhere where you guys can chat about the game as well. We have got there. Are you licking your wounds, Kiwi lad? Remember what I told you yesterday? I hope you are fine. I am completely fine. Lawrence, I feel like I probably took it about as best as a Kiwi could for that game up against the South Africans. We have got there, did you see Borthwick's interview post Fiji game? I can imagine it wasn't Flash because, you know, before that stage at Twickenham, their worst winning margin was 17. But every other time they had won by more than that 17 mark. And then to lose that game by eight up against the Fijians, that would have hurt. Definitely because they're a side at the moment who are struggling. And with the World Cup just around the corner, the last thing you want is to be having all sorts of records just beforehand for a whole different reason. But that is going to be kicked off now by Samoa with Lima Sopawanga. The second half now underway. And Ireland, big run forward from Kaelin Norris. 
little bit of a counter rack there from the Samoans. I believe they could end up getting penalized there for leaving their feet. Charged down. And the ball's gone high towards the touchline. And now Ireland will have themselves a line out from inside of their 22. But a lot of early pressure coming from the Samoans in this one already. All Blacks don't have a chance against France, says Avi Lamasuku. And also we're good there. Go Manu Samoa. Show them the Pacific brand of rugby, says the NRE. And don't go to beat Scotland. You heard it here first, says Yvonne. And now it's nicely thrown in. Taken by Ty Byrne at the front. It was the most physical team in the world, says Bianca. Ooh. It's a tricky one. I know that the Springboks forward pack is always talked about in terms of being extremely physical. But I guess as an overall side, you're always going to see some physicality from the Pacific Islands. Because their backs tackle like their forwards and their forwards tackle like their freight trains. So you normally see a lot of a lot of big hits coming from Fiji and sides and whatnot. And the world, if France turn up, they could win. Says Stephen. It's the AB's mate. Says was there from Nazi Williams. Now Jonathan Tamatini on the halfway line. Kicks the ball up high. Ed Fidel chasing after this one. Nicely taken by Connor Murray. Great low tackle on him though. Now going to this left hand side. They have got numbers, but it's the knock on from Kalen Doris. Luatoa tried the kick downfield. Doesn't work out. All Blacks just jumped to $1.85. Gonna get some of that, says Blue. Uh, France turn up, they could win, says Steven. And also we have got their lower chance against France. Says Nazi Williams and Pacific Island forwards run like the backs. Says Tupo. Very true. They've got speed to match, which is always very awesome to watch. Now, 38 minutes remaining in this game, and Samoa in a good attacking position on the field as they drop to the lowest odds that they have throughout this whole match at $6.50. And I'll say, yes, Sutis. Says Ruben. I mentioned that Spain are currently playing up against Argentina, and that is a very one-sided affair in favour of Los Pumas, so building their momentum quite nicely towards Paul D, which Samoa are also a part of. Going to be scrum reset. Get your balance. Says Wayne Barnes. I can tell already that Tom Stewart has not made a good impression on Wayne Barnes. He's had to tell him off three times for talking back, and now Wayne just looks at him like a disappointed father. He just looks at him and goes, wish you were off the field. And he might be able to make it happen if he talks back to him again. An Ireland B team to make the uh, final decision. Who goes to the Rugby World Cup? Ireland will win the end. Says EC. I see the Samoans are powered by Lima, uh, Brian Lima. Says Sighted. I watched on TV last night an old Rugby World Cup 2011 against France. What a game. New Zealand 8 and France 7. And who's second in the Rugby World ranking? I think with that win for the Springboks, they may have popped up. If I'm not wrong. Is that correct? And I think that France versus Australia can determine a little bit as well in terms of how those top four sides sit heading into that Rugby World Cup. Now the ball going to be available for the Samoans. Jonathan Tamatini going off to the left-hand side. Jonathan Talfua has made his way onto the field for Samoa as well. I should mention, I assume that is for either Talini Su or maybe could be Fritz Lee. I see Talini Su is still out there, so it will be for Fritz Lee. I tell that to the four-pack. There's some damage. Goes on in there, says Blue. Now 10 metres out, Samoa. Going to the short side, Lima Sopawanga. Flat ball. Oven in the hands of Tamua Manu, who was absolutely smashed in that tackle. Now Nigel Wong trying to fend off Jeremy Luckman. But the Samoans slowly getting just that little bit closer to the try line. Jordan Lay has his go. Now a flat ball, big run from Jordan Talfua. Around the side of the breakdown. You can hear the crowd starting to get behind the Samoans here as they know they are very close to closing in on that try line. Tamua Manu again going to be just held up short of the try line. Now Tamatine looking to get this one out right, but it's going to be a penalty advantage and Wayne Barnes calls for it straight away. I think Samoa wanted to have one last crack at their love, both these teams. Going to be a New Zealand South Africa final this year. And also we have good there when will Moana Pacifica face the Highlanders next year at some stage throughout the Super Rugby Pacific season. I haven't actually seen the schedule yet in terms of when they are going to be taking place. They have to make a decision here. And it looks like Lima Sopawanga is going to accept the three points to give the Samoans a six-point lead. 
And Barnes loves the underdogs win. And for Amalosi, Manusam Moa, says Peter Stowers. At least not be fooled by yesterday's results, says Neil. A Samoa win. Do South Africa go to number one spot? They'd have to be close, I'd assume, with Samoa being ranked at 11th. But I think it also is based off what France are able to do. Although with France losing to Scotland, I think that that hurt them a little bit. And do you think the All Blacks cashed it in uh, and took the night off or just physically got beat down? I think they got physically beat down. Plain and simple. I think that the Springboks, their four-pack out physicality, the ABs, their back line were a lot more consistent throughout the game. They gave away less penalties, had a lot less handling errors. They just outclassed the ABs in pretty much every way that they could. <laughs> now, 34 minutes remaining, and that kick has gone over from Lima Sopawanga, so that will now make the score 7 points to 13. Six-point lead now for the Samoan. Six out of Africa and Scotland will beat Ireland in the Rugby World Cup. Says Benjamin, and also Samoan packs looks, uh, looks like box with the pick and drive. Says Hanoi and Ireland are second-half team, says Patrick Green there. Big confirmed by World Rugby for the weekend. Box win by 15. Ireland have to win or box go to the top, says Matthew there. It's going to be play on. Samoa playing a little bit of volleyball, just tapping around to different players in their team. But now Jonathan Tamatine he has been told to use it. He's just making sure he was on the right side. I see that Paul Alawamili has actually made his way off the field and Michael Alalatoa going on to the field to face quite a few of his teammates from Leinster. Murray going to the left-hand side now. Now Ireland looking to fire pretty much directly back after conceding the three points. Henderson now crashing forward and I think Ireland off the bench. They are definitely going to be looking to have a little bit more of an impact then the starting 15 have had. Crowley goes for the kick and behind. The advantage is over. And the ball stays in the field to play. Lima Sopawang, a lot of pressure on him. But McClowski misses the tackle. And the end taken down by Jimmy O'Brien. Looks like Tomatine. He will be passing it across to some of the forwards. Just trying to build up a few more phases. Samoa winner, says Junior. And also Springboks win for the All Blacks. 35-7, uh, like how? Played a very good game of rugby. That is how. Now Jonathan Tomatine. And the ball up. It's going to stay in the field of play. Just on the halfway line now for Ireland. And Connor Murray looks to pass it off to Jacob Stockdale, who we have hardly seen throughout the whole of this fixture. But now the space starting to open up for the Irish. Up to the 22. I'm going to sneeze. They were two big sneezes in a row, but I managed to mute myself again. We're back. Ireland still just outside. Of the 22, I think I'm allergic to just ear. And I, Johannes Bain, goes over Moa. Now passed out wide to Tom Stewart, lined up by Duncan Paiola. And there was a knock on. Are we going to take a lot out of this weekend, or are we just thinking it's all just warm up? Uh, where players are taking it easy? Says Flesh, and I mean, of course, it will be a good confidence booster for a few of the sides around the world, and maybe a wake up call for a few of the others, but. Overall, I think that the big one is just around the corner. And that is the Rugby World Cup. And of course, it's all well and good winning these games of the build-up. But they want to make sure they're delivering when it gets to that big competition. That was huge contact on Jimmy O'Brien. Question is, did Say La La Lamb's shoulder connect with O'Brien's head? I believe that they looked at the replay and it was going to be all right, Barnes. Uh, as useless as a referee. Says Irish Tom, how big of an upset will it be if Samoa win? It would be a massive upset. So Samoa in this game, they have been a $41 underdog. And then at the moment, they're only $3.60 underdogs. Unless you again, change the season, mate, go Samoa, says Chalabi. And also, yes, sir, my favourite streamer is streaming, go Samoa, says Aimbot there. Yeah, it's currently ticked over to almost 8 a.m., here in New Zealand, the sun has come up. We have been streaming since 2 a.m. New Zealand time. So we've, we've seen the evening. It looked a bit dark, and now it's light. It's kind of how nighttime works, isn't it? That sun's bright, though, when I put my head back there. Now, got, you know when you look at the light, and then you get, like, the fuzzy stuff? An Islanders plan says YouTube. It looks like now Gary Ringrose, he didn't look too far off making his way onto the field, but he's put his bib back on. 
So I think he might be waiting just that little bit longer. Currently 13 points to 7. Jimmy O'Brien will be able to continue this match. Is this Irish team full strength? Relatively. I know that people would argue saying it is the B team, but there's still some fantastic players in this starting lineup. Whether that's Matt Hanson, Josh Van Den Flair, Kaelin Doris, Ty Byrne, Connor Murray. There's a lot of guys in there that definitely will want a better result than what it is currently sitting at. I really don't understand the bookies. Most of the time, Leinster and Irish have regularly shown a real, uh, real weakness to physical teams. You don't get more physical than some. Moa says Matthew. And are there any Super Rugby players playing in this game you know? So a lot of Moana Pacifica players are in the Samoan side. James Lay, I believe that he is actually at the Blues, if I'm not wrong, as well. It's going to be kicked into touch, but the likes of Jonathan Tamatine. Uh, you've got Ed Fidel playing for Moana Pacifica. You've got off the bench Christian Leliofano. We oh, yeah, have got Dow Island to play in the F side fumble. Says Kenovic, and it's 7.55 a.m. New Zealand time. Says Peter Stowers, certainly is almost the 8 p.m. Looks like Rob Hearing is now onto the field for Tom Stewart. And I'll be honest, Stewart hasn't had the flashes game. He spent more time arguing with the ref than he did playing in the match and actually ended up getting a side penalised for talking back to the ref three times in a row. Right, Naria for Ma'i. Now making his way out there. Someone needs to score one more. And a score says Aimbot. Well, Luke to ear. Good luck with that one. Says Blue. I uh, thought Alaratol was injured. He was at the start of the Pacific Nations Cup, but now he is back and rearing to go. Samo could push it. Argentina says Hanoi. It's interesting. Both sides playing at the moment. Spain struggling big time up against Argentina. Spain, one of the teams that are missing out on the Rugby World Cup. Super Rugby has certainly helped. Makes you wonder how much the bookies watch. Uh, the Super Rugby exposure, uh, exposure should also sort out some of those old fitness issues. Fingers crossed, says Matthew. Now Connor Murray going to the short side. Nice pass away to Jacob Stockdale. Puts in the chip and chase. They are chasing after this one. The Irish and Connor Murray gets himself over the try line. Slamming the ground out of excitement. And they're going to have a look just to make sure. But... Does seem like the Irish may have just gotten themselves straight back into the contest. And Manu says Champagne Lord. And mission one for the Irish good uh, players. Don't get injured. Uh, others try to convince for selection. Samoa to win. Show they're ready, says EC. Going to the short side. It was well spotted by Connor Murray. He saw that there was a bit of a gap there for Jacob Stockdale to run through. And Connor Murray won the foot race with his opposite number, Jonathan Tamatene. It's just whether or not. Nah, he's fine. As in behind there, Connor Murray. 50-50 challenge, gets the ball down. And Ireland now will take the lead if they can get this conversion over. Come on, Ireland, let us or let us win this one so we can parade. Says Tupu. And also, I couldn't find you. I couldn't find you in Scotland played Georgia, says Blue. That is because I was watching that game with the commentary on so that I could learn some of the Georgian pronunciations. So that is the reasoning why you didn't see me for that one. But yeah, it was more of me doing a research stream rather than a commentary stream. That's kick has missed away to the right-hand side, so the score will now remain at 12 points for Ireland and 13 for Samoa. Now Samoa, even with just that try being scored against them, they shoot straight back up to $8 underdogs. Which is surprising. Okay, now it's gone down to $5. I feel like they realised that that was maybe a bit too high. At this point, we need a parade uh, today, so I don't uh, have to go to church. Come on, the Manu says 685. And Lucky Bounce says G Fan. Yeah, although the opportunity it did set up due to Stockdale and Murray running to that short side, putting the pressure on. And you'd have to argue, even if the bounce wasn't favorable, more than likely Samoa get either tackled five meters out from their line and under insane pressure, or they get forced dead to then end up, or forced into the end goal, which then ends up with a five metre scrum for the Irish. And what a kick, uh, like Tran Duck in 11 cup final. Says Hanoi, but it's kicked downfield now. Ross Byrne onto the field for Jimmy O'Brien. That is a sub that we were expecting to see due to the lack of form, unfortunately, from O'Brien. But he did get himself the try, so that makes it a little bit trickier for them to work out exactly how he went. Ireland tapping the ball back now to Jacob Stockdale. Missed tackle 
from the psalm on number 16. Still going to be available for them, and that is actually in Malolo. The number 16 for psalm off. The scoreboard says Benjamin. It is fixed. Connor Murray. Now rolling this ball back. Let's go for the box kick down towards the halfway line. Ball swirling, beautifully taken there by Jacob Stockdale, who we hardly saw in the first half, but now he is certainly starting to ramp up. What time is France versus Australia game? It is at five. Whoa, the sun's come out. It is at five, no, sorry, 3.45 a.m. New Zealand time tomorrow morning. Oh, we haven't seen a draw in a while. That is very true. This is going to be... A slight annoyance with the scoreboard. It wasn't supposed to be sunny, so we'll go this way a little bit more like that. And we'll have a bit of a bit of a side shuffle. There we go. That'll do. That, we're still going to be slightly see-through. How many minutes to go, please? At the moment, there is still another 26 minutes remaining in this contest. So, yeah. There's a chance that this could easily go either way. Amish, did you have breakfast? I have not had breakfast yet, no. I had a banana. Earlier on, hey, the sun's gone away again. And if I wish, uh, Ireland lose to Samoa, Springboks will move up to number one, uh, where the champion's supposed to be, says Johannes. And to be fair, it wouldn't make sense for South Africa to go on as number one, as defending champs for this Rugby World Cup. Not being at number one, I feel like, will probably frustrate them more than anything. And 8am now in New Zealand, says Spider Mech. And Murray did well in fear, or in fun. Says G Fan, nicely taken by Ireland, and now looking to get this rolling mall starting to march forward. Nice step from Josh Van and Flair. He has been almost non existent throughout this game. Come find a Samoan girlfriend, says 685. I have wanted to go to Samoa for a while. Perhaps that could be a good excuse to go. Now, nicely taken by was Theo McFarlane. Jonathan Tamatene looking to shift this one out to the left-hand side, back into the pocket to Lima Sapawanga. Put himself under pressure by having the fumble. He has knocked it backwards. Now, big run from Jordan Talfoa. Finds the offload away. Tip to Muamanu. Now, numbers on this left-hand side for Samoa. Nice step there from Ulipano Jr. So tiny, but he knocked the ball on. Are they unsurprised? Says Barry Nossa Chichi, says Blue. Also, hey, from Brandon, welcome in, mate. And I don't think any team wants to be number one going into a big tournament, says Sighted. Back into the pocket, Connor Murray. Gives it back to Byrne. Are you and your dad going, uh, doing any Warriors final game? Uh, if it don't collide, I would like to do the Warriors playoff games, although I'm worried that if I do it, that's going to be when they start losing. So I'm hesitantly keen to do those matches. And, yeah, if we'd end up doing it, I'll probably have my dad with me as well. Do these games change the world rankings? I've been informed that if Ireland lose this game, South Africa go number one in the world rankings, no matter the result of France and Australia. We have got their 3.01 p.m. Saturday afternoon. Glad the Rugby World Cup games will be just six hours ahead of the USA, not 17, says Kerman. Right, Wayne Barnes just discussing line-out numbers. Going to be nicely taken there by Theo McFarland. And now it's going to be Sam Moa. We have a little bit of a rolling mall attempted until Jonathan Tamatene took it out of the bag. Lima Sopawanga inside ball to Stephen Luatua, who drives up to the 22. Now big run from the big man, James Lay. This is great pressure at the moment. That was in through the side of the breakdown from Ireland. Probably very lucky if they get that turnover, but instead it's going to be back with Sama Malolo. 10 metres out. Michael Alalatoa passes up to Jordan Talfour, runs straight at Caelan Doris. Now Samoa getting closer and closer to getting themselves another try. It's going to be a loose ball, though, and taken back by the Irish. Jack Crowley, pressure on him. That's going to be advantage over Samoa. Now we'll have the opportunity to run it back. I don't think rankings mean anything to the teams. I think the teams know their worth. That's how they know if they are playing good or not uh, on a game-to-game -game basis. Says Mr. Skits, and will you go to the Rugby World Cup? I won't be going to the World Cup, but we will be covering all the games on the channel, so be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Ross Byrne now has to return fire with a kick of his own. Goes down towards the 22 of the Samoans. And we have got there what the heck happened to the much uh, vaulted, or vaunted, sorry. Irish side is the Northern Hemisphere hype train derailing. I wouldn't say so. I mean, at the end of the day, yes, it's a little bit of a shakier performance than they would have liked. 
and a few of these warm-up games. But, you know, the All Blacks just had a record loss to the Springboks. They were highly sought after for this Rugby World Cup. They still come in as favourites to this upcoming Rugby World Cup. So, yeah, it's an intriguing one to see how these games affect sides heading into that World Cup. But Theo McFarlane just had an absolutely brilliant run, about 30 or so metres, and then a loose ball meant that the Irish will have themselves the scrum feed. It's coming in an even playing field, said Mumbo Jumbo Kiwi, and also Irish winning streak ends by some. Oh, come on, and Jordan Telfu have been around for a bit, remembering him playing club footy here in Hawks, says Nazi Williams. We have got there. Our island is not going to win. Says Brandon, also Australia. Shout out to the Kiwi there. Says Peter Pihi there. Welcome in, mate. And 38 points to three is the score for Argentina's game. Yeah, brilliant run from Theo McFarland. Almost ended up cleaning up Lima Sopawanga in the same run. And the crowd is cheering Samoa hard. They certainly are. There are a lot of people in attendance who want to see the Samoans do well here. And the Irish are not one of those groups. They want to make sure they are building momentum towards Pool C. Or sorry, Pool B, I should say. Richie Moonga is an impression man. Looks like now Peter Omani about to make his way onto the field alongside James Ryan at number 19. These two guys, they can be game changers. Definitely Peter Omani because he'll be willing to throw his body on the line in the breakdowns. Even though we are this close to a World Cup, he won't care. He will try and get those turnovers. He should have passed to the winger outside instead, says Anoy. Going to be Ryan Beard now making his way off the field alongside Tyke Byrne. They are the two being replaced. What rank is Samoa at the moment? I believe they are ranked 11th in the world. So just to be sitting where they are in this game at the moment is massively impressive and a huge, I guess, a huge indication of what Super Rugby Pacific has done for Moana Pacifica in terms of bringing up some new talent into their rankings. I see Ian Henderson also going off the field. And Farrell has brought in eight players at once to test team resilience. Remember Van der Flair at the lineout. Uh, now he wants to finish the match with replacements. Says EC, and these games are so good for all the teams because no one knows the other team's strengths and weaknesses. And whether this is an Irish A or B team, doesn't matter. Fact is, they are an Irish team. Uh, Koi Manu says Alfie. And New Zealand got cooked. Ireland getting dismantled. Could France fall apart as well? Springboks might go back to back, says Amy. And also go the Manu says Shakina. But now, scrum feed for Connor Murray inside of the 22 here. For the Irish. Ireland were in serious trouble here. I uh, need some big experienced heads on the field. And I feel like that is where Peter Omani does offer a huge amount of experience. We have got there from Tofi uh, Tofi Galmalo. Hopefully I said it correctly. Fiji just beat England 30 points to 22, I believe it was, rather than 23. But yeah, brilliant win for the Fijians. First win ever at Twickenham as well. Now Stephen Luatua having a bit of a chat there to Wayne Barnes. It has been bucketing down for this whole match, I should mention. Every moment has had rain, and Samoa have been able to use that to their advantage, being able to make sure to put those high balls up. Super Rugby Pacific is out Samoa and Fiji. Says Seisuru, as well as Tonga, as well, for that Moana Pacifica side. Murray, this time the ball goes in. It's gone down on that far side, but Matt Hansen, who... I almost forgot was out there on the field. It is going to be a penalty, though, to Ireland at scrum time due to that pressure on James Lay on the far side. Yeah, Matt Hanson, we have not seen nearly enough of him in the second half. And Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy got Steve Hanson. Can we trust him? Oi, oi, oi. Says Mr. Loom. And Samoa are actually 12 with Georgia at 11. Says Mr. Kiwi. And also Samoa crushed him, says RJJ. Because I remember Samoa make their way up to ninth, didn't they? In the overall, uh, overall world rankings, when they were able to beat Japan, they actually got that nice big boost. Japan now sit 14th. So that has changed quite a bit. Come on, Samoa says Yan, and be strong, Samoa says Samoa. And this game means little more than experimentation for the Irish coaches. For Samoa, it's a really big deal to face Ireland. Says Kerno Wick. It looks like there might be a bit of an injury here for one of the Irish forwards. I see that Jordan Lane now making his way onto the field. That is to replace James Lay. I believe that that was, that's going to be Miracle Failangi making his way out there to replace, I think it's Chris Vui. 
who has gone off the field. Oh no, Talini Su has to make his way off. I think that's all of the changes that they had and how long to go. Please still 18 minutes remaining on the clock for this game. So plenty of time remaining for both of these sides, definitely with only one points difference between them. Come on, Samoa says 685 to the world. And be strong, Manu. Says Samoa there. And we've beaten Ireland once in the last, or in the past. And I hope this comes out as win number two. Nicely claimed by Ireland, though. And now looking to get this rolling mold marching forward. And it is certainly moving well towards the Samoan 40 meter line. It's been dragged down illegally by Samoa. So that will be the penalty advantage. Murray looks to his left hand side now. Couldn't find the pass, but they will go back for that initial penalty. We have got a donation. From Mumbo Jumbo Kiwi, thank you very much, mate. Usually appreciated for your super sticker. After the game for me, KFC, go Samoa. Says Robert Vale. And do, or did uh, Samoa beat Irish in 96 with Tui Gamala. Hopefully I said that correctly, but I think I mispronounced his name quite a bit, No, no. And Eddie and Hanson are big friends. What a combination. The only team I fear for the Springboks. Was it that long ago since Samoa have been able to pick up a victory? And Bernard's rubbish, Jed Stephen G. And also good to see you again, Hamish Shotto. So says Dexter, you too, mate. If you have been looking forward to this Rugby World Cup, it is just around the corner. We'll be covering all of it on the channel as well. But five metres out from the line. Now going to be Rob Hearing's throw. In fact, 10 metres out, just a bit further. Nicely taken to the front by Kaylin Doris. Holding strong at the moment, although now Ireland... Start to walk towards the line. Knee went down for Rob Hearing, but I believe he got back up to his feet and has now driven over the try line. It's going to be the try for Ireland. I don't know whether or not they'll check that to see whether or not he counts as grounded if he did go to a knee. But I believe at this stage they are saying it is going to be the try. And discipline boys in year, uh, I think it was. And not too worried, Ireland have Romania and Tonga in the semi warm up games. And the World Cup says Martin. And also, no Sky Rugged here. Uh, so this is my only channel, says Mumbo Jumbo Kiwi. And Tim Nenai Williams playing today. He is not. He's actually injured from that last game between the Barbarians and Samoa. See there, Rob, hearing the knee did go down after tripping on a Samoan player. Gets back up. Is it only if he has both knees down? It counts as a... They're just showing it from the side there. Well, hearing Wayne Barnes saying something about a shifting dynamic, so I don't think they are looking at that one. It must be if both knees are down, you're not allowed to pop back up to your feet rather than just the one. Now, Jack Crowley, one from two. Samoa currently are down by four. If this kick goes over, it will extend it to six. And it might be our Matthews and Byrne as a fine player. A few missed kicks last week. And he shanked that one as well, unfortunately. For the youngster, which does now mean that Samoa, they go up to $12 underdogs with only 15 minutes remaining power. Says Irish Tom and Box need to be peaking now. Ireland need to be peaking for the South Africa game. And Fiji topple the bricks. Says Spider Mick. Yeah, Crowley is not striking them too well at all. It's a choice for the nations to participate. Uh, in these contests, seems like uh, they're useless. So close to the World Cup and risking injuries. Says Kerman, and yeah, I guess everyone wants that little bit of game time under their belt before heading to that Rugby World Cup. Charge down with no fly and hip to the face. Says RJJ, and also unfortunate, says Amy there, but now Samoa do have to try and get themselves back into the contest, but Ireland, they will look to extend their lead from here. Murray, almost charged down by Miracle Fialangi. Hello, Kiwi lads, how are you doing very well, Ollie? Hope you are doing well also. Yes, that's how you do, Lads Island, says Ped, uh, Pedrick. Pedrick? Pedrick? I've forgotten how to say it. I do apologise. And also, looks like Asamon got his hands to the conversion kick, says Kevin. Oh, did he charge it down? Is that why he shanked it so badly? And let's go, Samoa, says the Timalua. It's gone over the top island steel with Rob hearing massive shot on him by Jonathan Tamatine. He's trying to rearrange his vital organs, and the penalty goes the way of Ireland. Greetings, Hamish and Jack. Uh, Bricking it here. An island worst Irish uh, performance I've seen in years. It's taken nothing away from Samoa. They're a really good team. Says Mountains of Asylum and Vitamin Green has said, Evening, gentlemen. Welcome in. Right, Ross Byrne. He's now going to be kicking this for the corner. And this is where 
it becomes trouble for Samoa because Ireland are starting to find that momentum. Oh, Samoa has ever been is seventh. So he's Mr. Kiwi for life. Kick's going to be from about 12 metres out. What do you think will Samoa do good in the World Cup? I believe that they will do pretty decently. They're in a group that has had a mixed bag of form. Japan, you'd argue, aren't in the best form. England certainly aren't in the best form. Argentina playing pretty well lately, so I think that Argentina are going to be in the top two for that group. And I believe these other three sides are all fighting for that other spot. Now thrown in. Taken at the front now for Ireland, and the change has been made of Eri Tara Inari onto the field. That is for Jonathan Tamatine. Now Connor Murray waited impatiently at the back, but now the Irish start rolling again. We're up here and just one metre short of the line. Murray searching for it in the breakdown to be able to find one of the big forwards. Advantage offside, and the Irish now closing in on yet again another try. Tom O'Toole turned to his back. Now sling and pass. Ireland almost held up partially there, but managed to get the ball back out the back of the breakdown. Now Josh Van den Flair round the side. And now just waiting patiently for either that advantage to go back or for Ireland to be able to cross that try line. That was a very nice flat run. Murray. Do they shift this one? I think they got to go out to the right hand side, shift it wide, but instead they have gone to the forwards once more. I believe that time it would have been Tom O'Toole again. Leaving it for the forwards to use. They're up to about seven or eight phases now just next to the breakdown. Just next to the try line, I should say. Now Tyke Byrne. I thought he went off the field. He must have come back out there. Samoa's still defending though. After nine phases, this is very close for Kaelin Doris. Just not quite able to reach out though, and they'll go back for the original penalty. A brilliant job there watching from Canada. And cheering for Ireland says Justin, so welcome in, mate. Must be a decent ish hour for you, maybe in the afternoon in Canada, if I remember rightly. The time zones and go the Manu says Spa, and go Manu says Pete Pal in there as well. Right, strategically, Ireland, if they take the three, they'll be up by seven. But I believe they want to go for the corner here. As uh, 2pm, says Justin. Kaelin Norris trying to reach out. Touch the try line. Couldn't quite get there, though. And that was brilliant goal line defence from Samoa. That is something that they have done well throughout the Pacific Nations Cup. To limit the amount of tries being scored by the opposition. Ross Byrne now puts it into the corner. Five metres out from the line. Ireland will once again go for this rolling ball, which does seem to be where they have been the most effective Throughout the second half, be brave Ireland, says Mr. Loom. Peter Omani, could the veteran get himself a possible try? It's rolling around, well defended by Samoa. In fact, I think they've almost been able to shut that one down, but Murray does receive the ball at the back. Spinning the tackle from Miklowski. Pops it back up now to Jeremy Luckman. Gets within the two metres. For Ireland, this will be frustrating, but they do have to patiently. That was very close. In fact, it's a goal line dropout. How did he not get that one down? Did he try and reach out a bit further than he should have? Looks like they turned the player to his back. It was actually James Ryan who went for him as, or went for it himself. Wasn't able to get over. Too many Irish players are thinking about the World Cup. Forgotten that this uh, there is a good team in front of them, says Mountains. And surely can test. Says Dexter, and Hamish is a good Scots name. Says Stephen there. And also we've got the intercept try to get us ahead, says Dexter. It's going to be a goal line dropout though for Samoa. Still 10 minutes remaining on the clock. And Ireland from 45 out. Now charging forward, it's Caelan Doris. He goes for the chip in behind. That is a very risky tactic. Rather than just running it forward, trying to keep that pressure on. And Samoa had about three or four players back there to cover, although that is a waste of kick from Eritara Inuri. Giving the ball back to the Irish, who now will run it forward. It's going to be in the hands of Gary Ringrose. Murray going to the right. They haven't made that sub of Craig Casey as of yet. Matt Hansen gets his first touch for the last 20 minutes. Just haven't really been able to get it out to his wing. A lot of heavy contact coming throughout this contest. Connor Murray. Short ball from Miklowski off to Kaelin Doris. Thought about offloading Eritara Emery. Thought about contesting, but both men 
the side against it. Grubber in behind from Ireland to get it five metres out from the line. And that is now going to be a line out. Whoa, I'm disappearing. I'm like, my head goes completely invisible on that side. I have to move this way or else I'll disappear. And Ireland's starting to look strong here. Says Blue. And also, it's not Ireland's strongest team, says Patrick. Although there's a lot of great players in this Irish side. And I can tell you right now that Andy Farrell will not be happy with what he has seen from a few of these experienced players. I've almost lost half my eyebrow. Pretty impressive. Oh, that smacked a Samoan in the face. Although saying that, the last time Samoan got smacked in the face with the ball, they scored a try. Good pressure put on there from Nigel Awong to shut down that play. From the Samoans, or sorry, from the Irish attack. Luckman now, wide cutout pass over the top from Ross Byrne. Ryan, again dragged down. I think Caitlin Doris has probably been the pick of the forwards throughout this matchup. Relatively solid game. I see that Craig Casey has now made his way on. Of course, Caitlin Doris would knock the ball on because I said he was playing well. Now Lima Sopawanga taken down 15 metres out. They've got the advantage for the knock-on. Only eight minutes remaining. And Argentina 55, Spain 3 is the score. And they want to go Manu Samoa, says Villiamu. I think the advantage is almost over. Samoa back into the pocket. Eritara in a recharge down by the Irish. And that will keep the ball in the field of play. Advantage is over. 40 metres out from the line. Islanders certainly throwing everything at the Samoans for the final moments of this game, but they just haven't quite been able to get that last minute try that they're after. Craig Casey, quick hands, knock on there from Jack Crowley though. And now we go back for another scrum because in football, uh, there are number 12 ranked teams, says Patrick. And credit to Samoa, says G-Fan. Yeah, I feel like both of these sides, don't get me wrong, Ireland have actually had some pretty decent moments in this game, just nowhere near as many as they would have liked to have. Like that early pass, or well, the early try that they scored with Matt Hansen uh, alongside it was Jimmy O'Brien. Like, that was some very classy backline movement with the cross kick involved as well. But since then, we haven't really seen many kicks coming from the Irish. 94% possession over the last 10 minutes, but they are only the four points ahead currently. I have uh, said on here, Ireland are a second half team, said Patrick. And Ireland starting to get momentum, Samo, I need to pull finger. Says Blue, and we are ranked number 11. And also go Manu. Says Pa. Six minutes remaining. All it would take is a non-converted try, and Samoa would take the lead back. And this game, Mac hasn't touched the ball, says Mark. Yeah, not for a very long time. Unfortunately, he's only had two very short touches in the second 40 minutes. What is the chance Samoa will win? Well, first they have to retain their line which they have been able, or sorry, their scrum, which they have been able to do. And it's kicked out on the full by Nigel Wong, so that hurts them big time. Whoa, I'm once again disappearing. I do apologise for the lighting issue, ladies and gentlemen. I did have a curtain up, but it did fall down, unfortunately. An Argentinian uh, player can't beat anyone, but they are not consistent. Says, oh sorry, can beat anyone, but they're not consistent. Oh yeah, I've got the all the best blue. Says Hans and Fatamalosi boys. And when some are fit, they can keep up with anybody. Says Hababa. Or ha -ba, ba ba I see. An extra bar on there as well. Again, okay, nearly serious, or injury isn't too serious. Yeah, hopefully it's nothing major for him, although it didn't look too flash when he made his way off the field. Is James Lowe playing, says Squidward Boss? He certainly is not. They have decided to rest him for this game. <laughs> My face is missing. Oh, that side. Are they close to the try line? Ireland currently are sitting about 30 metres out. From the Sam online, how long to go? It is only five minutes remaining. Craig Casey passes off to the right-hand side. Some quick hands from Byrne. Now going off to McClowski. Peter Romani, I think one of these Sam players were trying to say he was possibly taken out. And no, Sexton and are not playing. Yeah, I think Sexton, his ban is almost up. So he will be back for some of the Rugby World Cup. Uh, if we win, it's already unconvincing. Maybe uh, good to be brought back to earth. Says Brian. And so uh, uh, Sam uh, has to win this for the Springboks. Says Mand. Now moving up to 30 out. Craig Casey. I just heard someone say very clearly, if me. So one of the Samoans frustrated 
I think that was from the lack of the ball, but that has to be a Samoan turnover here, and they get themselves the penalty. They are still $15 underdogs. They're March 4-10 as well, due to a little bit of cheekiness coming from Matt Canson to kick that ball away. And James Lowe, Māori All Black. So here's Mr. Loom there as well. Hey, you're disappearing, mate. Like those characters in uh, Infinity War. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm starting to slightly disappear. But yeah, it's due to the sun. The sun goes on the green screen. Look, I can make a bunny. There you go, a little bit of finger puppets. Oh, that look, that wasn't quite a bunny. That bunny's mouth fell off. Uh, sixth band is over after this game. Sixth man's of asylum. So yeah, just in time for that rugby World Cup. Ireland struggling and Ireland admit. Says Amy, just do it for the Southern Hemisphere. Says Justin. And there as well. But now Samoa looking for a last minute upset with three and a half minutes remaining on the clock. Piero Mani just getting the boots back on. It's going to be a big moment here for the Samoans. They are about maybe 30 or so metres out from the line. Important throw for Malolo. And it's claimed by Samoa. Passed across Eritara Inari. Now first receiver, Tamua Manu. Now out to the left-hand side. They had numbers there, but instead it will be Junior Saltini. Who does take it on himself. Iritare Inari goes across the Lima Sapuanga. Was that the right decision? There's an advantage. Now for the Samoans. And they have got themselves a penalty. Dagon Island. Says Justin. We have got there. I had a fear. That this could be tight. But for F's sake. Says Mark there. And please Samoa. Says Joshua. And the crowd are fully getting behind them. Are you going to watch the boxing today? Probably not to be honest. I haven't really kept up with who's actually fighting. And I think there's a Kiwi on the card. If I'm not wrong. Uh, uh, funny looking bunny mate. Says Dennis. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Sopawang has just blown it. He's just kicked it dead. So Samoa do not get that last minute attack. That they could have just had. It will be a 22 dropout or a scrum here. For the Irish. And I believe they're going with the 22 dropout. Uh, exciting finish. Rugby is a great game. And we were Samoa on the field. They would have been five metres out. But Lima Sopawanga not getting the kick in the corner. Instead kicking it dead. So Ireland now going for the 22 dropout. And getting a lot of distance on it. So Samoa, they will be sitting about 10 metres out from halfway. Big run forward. Now down the wing from Talini Su. Now Eritara Henry goes off to Jordan Talfua. 23 metres now. Around the side, Summer Malolo started to drive his leg. Ty Byrne has to take him down. But only with two minutes remaining on the clock. Now there's a new advantage to Samoa. And I think Ireland just pretty much ripped that ball out of the breakdown. Sopawanga has to make sure this one goes out in the corner this time. And if he is able to, Samoa have got a very decent chance of being able to close out this game with a victory. There's only 90 seconds left. And it's five metres from the line. The best chance for Samoa of the day to be able to score for rolling more as I start to fade into the abyss due to the rain. There is one last chance. Question why are Australia good rugby league players but average rugby union players? Because all the good players do go to league. And come on Samoa, do it for us. And we're a Samoa on the field. They will be five metres out from the line. Only one minute remaining on the clock now. For the Samoans, and it looked like there is some sort of injury here for one of the Samoan players. You can do it. Samoa, come on. Says Caesar. It's a head injury. Penalty try incoming, says Justin. And lack of rolling away, says Mark. Currently, it is locked out. In terms of the odds, Samoa, they were sitting $16 underdogs. Now, with a line out just around the corner, this is their chance to try and make the comeback. They are only down by four, which means even a non-successful converted, or sorry, a non-successful conversion off the try would mean that they still walk away with the victory. People pissing their pants in here, says Yuzel. Yeah, anyone who is new, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. We've got plenty more action coming in the near future, and I will have this problem with the green screen fixed. For the next live stream. We did have it fixed all weekend. But yeah now it is a relatively big problem. Not Ireland. Says Talili. 
And also, we're good. looking for the, uh, good for the World Cup. Need to steal one from Argentina or England. Make history, says Burning Lash. Blow the whistle, says Ali. But now, Malolo with the line out. This is only five metres out from the line. Stolen by Ireland. They'll kick it downfield. Matt Hansen looking for as many metres as physically possible. But Samoa making the mistake with Nigel Wong. He had the ball in his hands. It bounced out. And it goes into touch. Island scrum, or sorry, Island line out on the halfway line. And that is the massive difference maker. Samoa unable to claim that one clean. And now not just that, Nigel Awong, it hits his hands, bounces into touch. And now Ireland have got themselves the line out with only about 40 seconds remaining. And they will look to get this rolling more moving forward unless Samoa can get themselves the turnover right at this moment the chances of getting the win could be almost over big tackle made by Jordan Talfua and now Ireland just look to use those big forwards to use up the rest of the time that is remaining Craig Casey going across again it's one of the Samoan players decide to take the risk and go for the turnover still here Craig Casey once again, going short to Jeremy Luckman. But Ireland protecting that ball extremely well. Back into the pocket. And it's kicked into touch. The crowd are booing. But the Irish hang on. 17 points to 13. in a thrilling contest between the two sides. It's about as close as it gets to an Irish loss to the Samoans. But this will teach both sides a lot. Heading into that Rugby World Cup. Useless referee has calls have been terrible tonight. Come on, Ireland, says Irish Tom, and undefeated, says Mark. And there as well. And bookies uh, will be making some adjustments to their spreadsheets come Monday. And embarrassing from Ireland, uh, Ireland pathetic, says Stephen G. And I like some more. You played fantastic, says Mountains. And there as well. And Ireland are terrible, says Manon. And well done, Sam Moore. Put up a great fight. Respect for an uh, from an Ireland fan. And until next time, cheers, mate. So we have got our next live stream taking place tomorrow morning, ladies and gentlemen. That will be France. Versus Australia, and that is going to be a 3.45 a.m. kickoff here in New Zealand, which means 4.45 for you guys in Ireland, and a 5.45 p.m. kickoff for anyone who is in South Africa. Unlucky Samoa, and great commentating, bro. Keep up the good work. Says Chuck T. Thank you very much, mate. And bookies must have been sweating. True, because $41 underdog Samoa were at one point. So that could have hurt if they ended up having to pay out that. And hey, Hamish, what is your thoughts on the box game? Says not your everyday cultures. Springboks played the much better performance. They were a lot more clinical throughout that game and thoroughly deserved the win. Thanks for the coverage, says Justin. And Kira says, and now we have a Rugby World Cup pool. Oh, and not a single team in the top five, says Kurt. That is that is true. Yeah, it's a bit broken, isn't it? The system, World Rugby, they've already said that they want to make the next one a little bit closer to the World Cup so that they don't have these problems. But yeah, this World Cup is going to be a bit muddled with well they've got England number eight says Kerr and there's unfair play to Samoa they were great tonight says Eldon and thanks again Hamish brilliant, uh, brilliant coverage from the Invisible Man yeah I'm gonna have to buy a curtain for that window again because that one fell down sadly and the green screen that whole arm look at that just disappears I have a wrist and that's about it on a fancy how that works isn't it and I still go for Samoa even if uh, they win or lose I think the AB should have stuck with the game plan uh, that they beat us with. See, he's not your everyday cultist. And also we have good there. Definitely not going to, or definitely going to follow this commentary while watching the games in Spanish. Says, John, and how about, uh, how about how South Africa spanked us? Uh, mate, that still hurts, says audio. And that was a good game, says Tarlili. Yeah, both of these sides, I mean, they had their little moments in it. I have to say Samoa, they really pushed Ireland in this game, which I think was good for Ireland as well, because that now gives them a little bit more to work on before getting to this Rugby World Cup. You going live tomorrow, Hamish? I am for the France versus Australia game. And this is a wake-up call Ireland needed, in my opinion. Uh, we almost got beat tonight. Ringrose, Stockdale, Hanson need to understand what they didn't score. So here's EC. And also missed that game. Uh, time France versus Irish kickoff time, please. So France versus Australia, Irish kickoff will be at 4 third or 4 ooh, actually... Is it a 3.35 or is it a 3.45? 3.45. So that's New Zealand time. So it's 4.45 p.m. Irish. 
tomorrow afternoon or today tomorrow afternoon because it's evening in ireland so yeah 4 45 uh, when we will schedule the next stream says harry and like probably a little bit later on today and thanks Hamish. beautiful coverage alofa my uh Fangalili, god bless you uh one and all says uh, ta uh takito hopefully i pronounced most of that correctly we have got his gibson park injured I don't think so. I think they were resting him for this game. And Luckman not good enough, says Finton. Although he was brought on, I guess, in a little bit of a precious situation due to the injury of Kean Healy. Maybe they were only going to give him about 10 minutes at the end of this game. And thanks, mate. Great commentary, says Neil. Thank you very much, mate. And come on, Sam Mole. Uh, what you moaning about? You're doing pretty good. Here's the top team. Uh, just four points in it, says Spider Mick. And Mark McDonald, uh, not, he's, uh, not, he's not injured. In your chat as well. I feel like I'm missing a lot of messages as well, so I do apologise for that. I have missed any of your messages here you put in. We have got there to Portugal beat Aussie. I know that uh, Australia were ahead, but I'm not sure if they finished ahead. And now, as a side note, who said Roy Gard uh, wasn't strong enough, says Kurt. Yeah, I was very happy to see him score that try, Kurt. And the fact that we have his number on the back of that Hurricanes kit. Makes me feel just that little bit happier about it as well. Because, yeah, he's definitely going to be the second choice behind Aaron Smith. If not, maybe even pushing a few starts throughout their Rugby World Cup. Amish, do you think Ireland's peak is over? I do not believe so, no. I think that, yes, they have played maybe a little bit more rough in their last few games. But at the end of the day, Ireland, I'm hoping that when we get to that World Cup, we are going to get to see them playing like they were throughout that Six Nations, like they were throughout the November Internationals. And yeah, I just hope that they have some success. Thanks, mate. Looking forward to it. Thanks, mate. You're a star, says Dennis. Just woke up, says Ice Cartel. And good show, Samo. You'll get him next time. Says I was here. And there as well. Wins a win. Good work. Out for the second XV, says Kyron. Or Kieran. It might be, actually. Although there's a few of those guys in that starting lineup that certainly will get probably a bollocking. From Andy Farrell, he'll be like, well, you look through at that side. Matt Hansen, he'll be a starter. You look at Connor Murray, he'll be a starter. Unless, of course, they go with Jameson Gibson Park. I'll read this. Uh, or I'll read this because someone typed it. Says Kerr. Yeah, I read I read quite a bit. <laughs> when is the stream ending, says Harry? I'm like, are you trying to get rid of me? It seems like you might be sick of me, Harry couple minutes i'd say somewhere around there we haven't finished talking about the game just as of yet uh who was 10 for the irish so in this game they went with jack crowley and they'll have to return a sexton by that rugby world cup in the four back josh van and flower he was nowhere near evident enough i didn't think at line outs we saw a bit of him but in the running game and the jackling nothing from him other than one when they already had the advantage against them if the Aves don't win the World Cup, who you fancy then, says Dennis. I think that this World Cup is wide open, which is fantastic to see as a like neutral point of view because there's going to be plenty of sides that have got a decent chance of walking away with this Rugby World Cup. Uh, difference between number one and number 11, Samoa, unfortunately, don't have that uh, BMT, says Boxki. And also, uh, we're South Africa going to be number one in the rankings of Ireland had just lost. They were. The reason is I'm tired and going to sleep soon. I need to do my teeth and face wash, says Harry and Luck. Although at this stage after, like if you are leaving now, that is all good. We have only got just a couple little stats that we're looking at and whatnot. I'm 14 versus 15. For most of the game, great win for Ireland considering the circumstances. Says Giddy Giddy. 14 versus 15. Who was the player off the field? I don't think there was a card in this game, was there? Have I, have I missed a red card that happened in that game? I don't think there was one. Congratulations to Ireland. Uh, Ireland. Big respect to Samoa. Says that Fijian guy. And 62 points to three in favour of the Argentines. And there as well. Uh, do French like underdogs? Just dislike the Irish. Says Hanoi. Um, I feel like there's, there's that Six Nations rivalry between quite a few sides at the moment in the Northern Hemisphere. No card says Brian. No, I didn't think we had seen a card. In this game, I was getting confused for a second. And also, we have got the Ireland play like never played together. Individuals trying to make an impression. Uh, plenty of Irish or Ireland to plenty for Ireland to learn. Uh, I thought Bundy got sent off. 
surprisingly, not this game. No, Bundyaki wasn't in the side. He does get sent off quite a bit, but not for this one. He wasn't starting in this match. Conditions were terrible. Heavy rain all night. Sort of the team they wanted. Uh, they wanted to make a mosh bit of the game. Says Kieran. And normally, to be fair, Samoa don't normally play that well in wet conditions, but they play tactically a lot better than Ireland for a majority of this game. They went for those high balls that Jimmy O'Brien was dropping nine times out of ten. Any time that it went up on the halfway line with the box kick, it was being contested and Samoa were ending up with the ball in their favour. Good night, Amish. See you soon, says Harry. See you later. Uh, where all the Spanish players are eligible to play. Says Vaughn, I guess it doesn't really matter for them now, does it? Seeing as they've already been knocked out. And Fiji up to six in the rankings, if I'm not mistaken. That is huge for the Fijians heading into this World Cup. With massive momentum. They're in Group C alongside Wales, Australia, who are playing tomorrow night up against France. Anyone who is new, be sure to hit the subscribe button because we are going to be live for that game as well. But yeah, the World Rankings... I think the best way of describing what's happened to them this weekend. <laughs> They've just been smacked all together. Reshuffled completely. Like a cake that's been squashed. Because we see Fiji move hugely up. We see England drop. We see South Africa make their way up. But not quite to the top. Due to this game not quite going that way. That they wanted it to. Uh, I heard Fiji go to 7 but maybe a 6. Uh, whereas England. I think England's... Maybe about eight, if I'm not wrong. I know what's happening now. Was watching, uh, watching an old stream earlier and got confused. Says giddy giddy. I see. Oh, Bundyaki red card. I'm trying to think of what game that was. I know that for Connacht, he got a red card in one of the matches that we covered on the channel. But he's had a few reds for Ireland as well, hasn't he? And Boomer's going to surprise a few teams. And a good game, all good. Says it was Fasu. And also, I know what happened now. Oh, no, I read that one in England. Eight. Says Kerr. So is that the lowest England have been? Overall, top five is Scotland, New Zealand, France, South Africa, Ireland. Scotland number five. You'll be happy enough with that, Kerr. Second half, they worked well up against the Georgians. In that first half, Georgia were pushing them, but I think that's just with those big forwards that they have. We weren't quite able to find that momentum. We are still number one. Says Gadget Inspector. And also we have got... And there, yeah, he got sent off last World Cup against Samoa, I think. And what would prove, or what would prove if Ireland had won by 100 points, if all? So a close game is way better for the two teams, says Dennis. I think so. Yeah, Wales well, now at 11, I think. Says Kerr and Bundy. Get a red card? Never, says Brian. That is like... Is this too harsh? I feel like people will get annoyed at me. I was going to say Bundy Aki getting a red card is as rare as Johnny Sexton arguing with a referee. Happens quite a bit. Rest of the world, Ireland pick too soon. Says Irish one, or, uh, eight is their lowest ranking ever. Says Tristan and Samoa are now number two in the rankings. Says Ice Cartel. I worried about Kian Healy. Yeah, hopefully it's nothing too serious for him. That was probably the major takeaway from this game in terms of injuries for the two sides. Was old Samoa game. They pretended, or oh, they pretended was tonight's game on a stream. I need uh, to stop drinking. Low blow Hamish, says Yvonne. And also I think Kian uh, just sprang. He didn't even go into the back room for treatment and Bundy should be the uh, in the Warriors with his tackle technique. And also I forgot, uh, forgot about the match. Was it any good? It was close. I feel like some would argue that maybe it wasn't the best match as a spectacle wise because of the rain, because of the knock-ons and everything that we had. But like if you like a close game of rugby, they don't get much closer than this one. There was a chance for Samoa to kick for the corner. Lima Sopawanga kicked it dead. There was the goal line dropout, which then Samoa got themselves another penalty, but then the steal at the end from Ireland to be able to get the ball back. There was plenty of action taking place throughout it. And it was a lot of fun to be able to commentate. But nonetheless, I do thank you all very much for tuning in. If you are new to the channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. We're back for Aussie versus France later on tonight. So what does this mean for Ireland? They won, and they do keep their number one spot. On the overall rankings. Don't worry Samoa win or lose. You guys are still winners. Ciao go Samoa. Says Le Pupa. And also I forgot about. Oh no I read that one. And Bundy. Uh, has won Bundaran Arkies. Uh, they are always in the wars. Tinkers. Says Kieran. And also we'll get the oi oi oi. And hippos for the win. Says Kier. You think I should get out the hippo kit. For the later on live stream. It is very yellow isn't it. But I could end up. Putting it on. 
for that late night live stream. See if it gives the Aussies some sort of luck up against France. Uh, you leave God alone, Johnny Sexton. Great player, says Dennis. He is a very good player. He, he is very handy with the ball in hand. And he's actually got better with age, I believe, Johnny Sexton. He's like a fine wine. Because for Leinster over the last couple of seasons, he has actually really upped his game, the distribution aspect of it. We have got the ABs will crush Ireland in the World Cup, says Nicholas. Although there's a chance that they may not even face each other. I've forgotten about this game when the ref blew up. Says Maurice, a new sub, thanks man, says Gadget, in, uh, Gadget Inspector, thank you very much mate. Can you say Springboks, says Juan. There you go. And it was a good breakfast game for Samoan, 9am. Says Hanoi, yeah it is just about 9am here in New Zealand. I had to get myself some breakfast at some point. I had a banana earlier on, but that won't quite cut it, I don't think. And Johnny uses hypnotism on the referees, or only the ones they haven't bought off. Or oh, we haven't bought off with caravans, says Karen. And also we have got the island on the charge, says Douglas. They are going to be talking to Andy Farrell. He's just said, we'll take that, <laughs> was the best way of describing it. And he also laughed while saying, geez, we'll take it. But nonetheless, thank you all very much for tuning in. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you all for the next.